with Caroline. <laughs> Dude, totally gonna get DRM'd for that one. Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? It is Tuesday. For those of you that are keeping track at home, um, or at work, wherever. This is the Gladiator we started on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, we finished it USA. We were just playing Coming to America. USA. Neil Diamond. They won. Oh, and uh, the, yeah, they won. They, they won. won. That, yeah. was a, that was an interesting that was, match. That was hard, man. Yeah. Well, you know, what do you expect? Anyways, this was a Gladiator that we were working on Sunday. Uh, we finished it earlier this morning. It's it's staying here till Wednesday uh, morning. Anyways, uh, a couple of you guys wanted to know what the wire management looked like on the Metra amp board. I know I have a light somewhere else, but let's let's take a look at that. I'll show you how that looks inside of the car. We'll start from the back. Now it'll go on either the driver or passenger side. So if you have two amps, you can do that, but. Here it is. Here's that factory floor mat from Jeep. It goes right up underneath it because it's up at an angle. So if you remember looking at it Sunday, it's, you know, has this riser right here. So it comes up out of the floor. Oh, knock the light down. Comes up out of the floor, comes up at an angle. Comes up everywhere. Yeah. So that. You know, still got room for your feet. Let me see if I can come at it from the front side. And that's that's about all you see really when it comes to the wiring. Uh, it, 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 nope, nope, it gets in there. Like I said, it goes right up underneath. Um, in this case, wiring comes up along here so all of the signal and everything come up this way and then the power wire goes that way base knob or uh, subwoofer wire goes out this way um, and then this is the gladiator fox box which is cool that's great oh you like this one here let me go around the other side um, so one of the one of the cool new features about the fox box is that he added in the the built, he added in the ability to do an L7 do an L7T. Yeah. Um, so as you can see here, it was round round hole for a ten, but it comes on the box itself. It has these notches lines. in it. it lines has like a line, so you can you can make a square. And uh, Fernando didn't believe me. No, I did. I did it. I say no. And uh, I go, yeah, dude. It's that's those, what he says. That's that's what. I say, and that's I say. what Mr. Fox said, and I he's say. like, I don't know, I didn't talk to him. Anyway, so then he cut out the thing, and it fit perfect. And I go, what are the odds? What did the fox say? That's right. Uh, so, anyways, this is an L7T right. inside the truck here. Um, there's not a ton of depth for a normal woofer, so that's why we went with this. It is ported out that side. Did you use, did you use the, the stock radio or an interface, question mark? No. Um, so we were getting to that. So the story behind this one is the, the guy had the small seven inch screen in the dash and the, he, he, the he bought the eight inch, but it wasn't, the camera and everything weren't programmed on. So he went to the dealer to have him try to do it and they gave him a bunch of crap. And he's like, you know what, screw it. I'll just buy a new radio. So we went with the Stinger High 10. It's funny because like a uh, long time ago, a customer came uh, with a Chevy and he got the bigger screen and he's like, it is Chevy, it should work and nothing works, right? So it's like, mm, yeah, that's not how it works, buddy. So. <laughs> uh, so anyways, we put the Stinger High 10 in. A couple of things about the Stinger High 10. Uh, you keep the factory uh, USB hub. Yep. Uh, this is retained. Um, charge. For charge and USB 2. And then in the armrest here, they give you a new cable to run to this. This is your Android Auto Apple CarPlay. Is the factory one here in the back. Uh, so you gotta, they give you a cable to run up into this. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh looks cool. Um, hang on, let me turn it on here. I'll show you some of the. One more. Yeah. Can you shut your door? Just so I don't have to listen to that. that, that. I don't really want to, but. I know, I know. You're the best. Everybody says that. So we go to home. Yeah. Oh, we're on home. Okay. Yeah. So you have your basic radio here. No presets. Um, hit home again. And then, oh, I want to go to. Yeah. Here's your climate control. Ooh, look at that. You turned it on? Look at that. All lights come on. What? 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 Let's just go there. Okay. Uh, AC in back. The cab. Vehicle information. So this is all done through what's called PackLink. PackLink, yes. Performance. Off this road. is the performance when it goes like. Dude, it's not a turbo. It is not. <laughs> uh, off road, <laughs> drivetrain, uh, vehicle information to give you the gladiator. And then if we go to camera, use the factory camera, you can add in these overlays to it uh, so you can kind of see what's going on with it. Yeah. Pretty cool. I like it. I like it too. I think it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then we'll go into settings just so you can kind of get an idea because everyone wants to see sound settings. So, uh, bass and treble are located here, loudness, subwoofer, um, oh, let me turn that back on, loudness, subwoofer, level control, uh, equalizer, it has 13 bands with six presets, crossover, uh, it has six presets, uh, six, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, 6, 12, 18, 24, I believe, hold on. Yeah, oh, no, just 18. Uh, so 6, 12, 18. And then you have time correction and you have presets. Yeah. So that is your high 10 in the JL. Um, for the JK owners out there, the JK will be getting these functions after the first of the year. So right now, if you have a JK and you have a high 10 in it, they're gonna sell an upgrade kit for you, or if you have a JK and you don't have it yet, you can buy the whole kit after the first year. Uh, Dean, how strong is CA glue? I need to glue my dash kit. One of the wire, one of the wings on one side that holds the radio is broke. Will the CA glue work? No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust it. I would never do that. I would always just. Uh, unfortunately, I'd go get another kit. Um, if you, at that point, you'd want to plastic weld it. Um, and what I mean by that is there's a couple different ways to plastic weld. And really what you need, it, and this is so, there's, there's two plastic welding things you can get. And I know this is the bad part because you can just go buy a new kit for probably 15 bucks. But this guy here this is a plastic welding kit that you can get from the cheap tool store you know, Chicago, Chicago Electric uh, I want to say these things are like 20 bucks um, it, but what makes this work and again if you have a soldering gun and you have some metal screen this is really what you need because you cut little pieces of this and you put them over two pieces of plastic and you melt the screen into it and that is what joins the two pieces together is that screen. You put one on one side, one on the other, or you just put a piece of screen down the whole thing. And I can tell you that will never come apart. The other thing that we have is the plastic staples, um, which I'm sure you've seen like bumper repair and stuff like that, that you just put a bunch of staples. And there again, you could actually, the staple thing, if you have a you know regular red, you know, where's my red stapler? Uh, you can heat those up and put, you know, with a pair of pliers and, and a um, uh, lighter and literally stick those in to the plastic and do the same thing. And then put some CA glue over it after you're done, after you're done. And then you'll have a really nice bond at that point. That would be my suggestion to you. Do you think Pioneer or Kingwood will ever build something like the Stinger Radio? 
for direct replacement. All right, so we can all agree that Alpine has done it already. Um, yes. And no, but he's a pioneer of English. So, in the other world, outside of the United States, they're already doing that. So, when you say direct replacement, what are we talking about? Like this one? Like a perfect fit. You know, something, I'm assuming, like a restyle from Alpine. Where uh -huh. you had, you know, Alpine started with, so here's the problem. Alpine did it with the restyle stuff. Yeah. And the restyle stuff didn't do very well. Okay, they they went they they figured they were going to come after all the trucks and in Europe it's doing wonderful and in Asia it's doing wonderful. All right, uh, but here yeah. it didn't do well, so they settled on the only one they do it for is the Jeep. All right, so the boss says Cyber Monday has extended. Oh yeah, so, so Sue, the boss is so Sue. Sue wanted me to let you guys know since we talked about it last night and some of you guys. Uh, catch the live video on Monday uh, because we do the rebroadcast. If you didn't get the opportunity to take advantage of the IRTA 2, uh, $22.43 off, uh, you could do it today as well. So today. It is today. Today is the last day. So today she at asked, midnight? Today at midnight. She, All right. she asked me to extend it one more day. So if you were on the fence about buying the, R the IRTA 2, um, get it now. Get it now. Uh, a lot of you guys took advantage of it last night. Thank you very much. That was awesome. It was. Um, I mean, that's probably the best tool you ever bought. It will be the best yep. tool you bought. John came by today, picked his yeah, up. Yeah, I picked his up. Yep. So, um, no, if, if, if you were on the fence and then you thought, oh, crap, and then last night you didn't get it, you still have time. She asked Where me you to, can get it, DNF tool drawer with the com. code. Haley, H-A-I-L-E-Y. Again? H-A-I-L-E-Y. Haley. Again? No. No. It's just like you say it three times, she might appear. Um, it's like Sandman. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that's that's that. that it's I yes. I was thinking like Beetlejuice. Oh, right? Beetlejuice. Yeah, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Hey, what's up? Um, yeah. But yeah, so if you, if you didn't get your IRTA too and you want to pick one up, you can still pick it up today. Uh, today will be the last day to get that awesome savings on it. Um, afternoon. Good afternoon. What's up? Guys. And also, a uh, couple things, couple couple maintenance things. Remember, Get if you if you are going to Master Tech Expo, if you're thinking about going to Master Tech Expo and you're an amazing wire guy, come on guys. There's so many of you out there that are amazing wire guys. Don't be silly. Enter. Send us some of your pictures to the usual place, dnfchristmas at yahoo.com. We just want to see your pictures. Enter. I'm telling you guys, all you gotta do is enter. We will look at your pictures. It doesn't hurt to enter. And you'll get an $800 voucher to get into Master Tech Expo for free. Yes. So that means the only thing you got to pay for is your hotel and your flight. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but, dude. Food is included. Food is included, so you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is get to your hotel. There'll be buses from each hotel to Master Tech. And also, if you compete, you get to keep the product. Yes. Yes. And, and I just let me tell you what. Some of this product is going to be freaking awesome. Because... Yeah. Yeah. I, I was talking with him yesterday uh, with, with all of our, our manufacturers' vendors, which are Audison, Orca, which is Full Calc Glade and Moscone, and HKI, which is Sound Digital and Ground Zero, and then uh, Electro Media, which is Audison and Hertz. Mm -hmm. Those are our three big sun sponsors, along with First Tech. And holy crap. Yeah. Like, the packages we're putting together for you guys is going to be insane. So... If you're a wire guy like myself, if you're a member of the 12 Volt Clean Wire Club, enter the challenge. Yes, yes it's, it's so many. It's so it's many. Simple. It doesn't hurt. It. it doesn't hurt. All you know, listen. If you're not up to what we want, it's no big deal. It's no harm, no foul. No one's gonna be like, bro, look what this guy sent us. Ah! No one's gonna do that. No one is gonna do that. Enter. I'm telling you, you gotta enter. You have to enter for sure. Okay. Um, so, uh, also, 12 days of Christmas is gonna start uh, December. Right now, it's scheduled to start December 10th. Yes. Um, which is a Saturday. Uh, so right now we have enough. That'll be 12 days. So if someone decides to enter, we're, we're going for the 12th. So, and you know who's part of the 12 Days of Christmas? No, I'm not telling anybody well, yet. Well, let me tell you. No, I'm not telling anybody yet. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody yet. But if you're trying to cut them a real promo. Yes. So, Ooh. this show oh. is... So, oh, I'm going to interrupt you. No. Because Morel, she yeah. reached out to me yesterday. I didn't uh -huh. tell you this. I was busy and, and I was in a crappy mood. Um, no, really? Yeah, I was in a shitty mood no. yesterday. Yeah, oh, what are the God, odds? I didn't even know that. Yeah, I know. 
Anyways, wow. well, you know. Okay, so hmm. she reached out to me yesterday, and she want even though everyone gets one day this year, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna do the 12 volt side, and then she wants to do a, uh, a home audio side. So we're also giving away uh, the Hagtalar. So she's sending us a Hagtalar to give away too. There you go. So if you wanna know what's a Hagtalar, yep. Hagtalar, 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 whatever it is, it's yes. a Bluetooth speaker. No, 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 they gotta go to the site. No, I'm just saying. I'm no, telling just you go what to the site. No, yes. no, no. It, so go you can site. go check it out. Where? See what it is at morelhifi.com. Where? Morelhifi.com. Is that the cool place where they have the story of Morel? Because oh it's the 45th anniversary last that year? That is correct. That's yes. a really good video, it by is the way. A good, and really it auto good plays video. as soon yeah. as you go to the website. Yeah. You just have to listen to it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, also, you can check here Morel underscore America. All this, all, all the the pictures of uh, speakers, amplifiers, and amazing tweeters. I also found out today that I'll be going to Canada. Yeah, you suck. Yeah, I know. I totally suck. We're going to uh, nobody cares. The CMA. Nobody so cares. anyone, it's it's gonna be and um, so Phil really screwed me up because oh, well because of what he was actually called Toronto. So it'll be in Toronto, Toronto. and the end of March they're doing. So the you're CMA. gonna meet the the. the the man from Toronto? I will meet the man from Toronto. Okay. Um, and I and I can just walk and go on. Hey. Okay, cool. And then I got I gotta get the shirt. I gotta get the shirt. What's up, Danny? So you we got a lot, lot going on. Lot yeah. going on. So plenty of opportunity to have fun this year. You have Master Tech Expo. Before that you have Knowledge Fest and then you have the CMAs. And it's not the Country Music Awards. Yes. It's Canadian yes. Mobile Audio. We'll be there with auto mods. Auto mods? Well, they call it auto mods is is the abbreviation. It's automobility, yeah. but they call it auto mod. Like, I'm like we have auto mods. Anytime you see it written, it says auto mod. <laughs> so it's like, all right, cool. Yeah. Uh the boss. The boss. Okay, yeah, that's Susan. All right. Um, what do we got here? 2012, 2011 Durango with Alpine. Which wire should I tap into to add a aftermarket subwoofer? I want a wider bandwidth for the new sub. Uh, if it's got the Alpine system and it doesn't have a factory subwoofer, you're going to tap one of the driver's front doors. Those yeah. are the subwoofers for the vehicle. Do not tap the rear door. And if you'd like to see why, if you go to DNF Tool Drawer, click on the IRTA2 and scroll down to the videos we have there, we have the video that shows you why because we took the IRTA2, hooked two channels up to the front speaker, two channels up to the back speaker. And we AB between the two so you can actually see how the front has more bass and the rear does not. That's what the IRTA2 will do for you amongst other many things. I've used that method to weld super expensive auto body parts. It works, it does work, It's it's, and I'm a big fan. Yeah. The only problem I hate is when your car is so old and crappy, when you weld it together, it breaks after the weld and then it breaks after the next weld and then I'll, you know, it's just like throw it away and start over. At that point, you're buying a new car? Yeah. Jesus? Yes. Hey Zeus? It's my cousin. Price points are always the factor. Of course they're always the factor. I got my Morel 2A 6x9s and 6.5 inch component set today. Very I already cool. bought the 5.1 Sundown Middler. Should I go ahead and get the Morel 2 inch instead? Yes. I'm installing all the speakers this Saturday. So the reason why I would really lean towards the Morel is it, <laughs> The, all right, when you go outside, so sound signature is very important when you're looking at speakers. So, for example, very rarely would you um, put a Focal with a Morel or, or something that is designed to sound one way with something that is totally designed to sound another way because you really kind of screw up the whole sound signature, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would never do that. Most audio people will tell you not to do that. Um, you have to look at a lot of things. Most of them is a frequency chart. Um, you know, over COVID time, Nick did, uh, Wingate from Orca, yeah. um, did an awesome video where he was talking about, should someone ask this question, can I take this tweeter and this mid range because they're both expensive and can I, com can I make them sound great? And the answer was, well, not necessarily. And because you have to look at like the EQ sound output of that. So like on a piece of paper, they usually put like a graph and they show like the sound output of the speaker. And then you would overlay that with the mid range, overlay that with the mid brace. 
and you would kind of see like where these things drop off or where these things are loud and, and it'll create problems with the audio that it's just a pain in the ass to EQ out, especially if you don't have an EQ. Whereas if you just go with something that is similar in construction, thought, process, and that's a big thing, then you don't have these problems because they're just, they're, they're made to go together. Yeah. And Tom, the engineer, is the same guy that designed a lot of the stuff. And well, Tom's, like and Tom, Tom is a fake person, but you know, Tom is like, hey, I'm not gonna just go off the rails on this one and come up with something totally different. So yeah. that would be my argument on why you should go with similar brand speakers, not just necessarily, you know, you have two brands, which I don't remember what they were already, but it, it doesn't matter. I would always keep the circle of life in the same brand. Yeah, that's right. Um, also, any more information oh, about this? Oh, funny. She goes, since it's so late that you're notifying, it should be one more day. Listen, it's not It's not about, no, it's about mean, quality boss, time. It's the know? end of the day. It's almost 5 o'clock. People are going to go so home you and can, spend money. You can so extend it to Friday I'm not, if you want to. At that point, let's just change the price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. She's just do discounts through Friday. No, no, no. See? No. I agree with William. What products? Uh, IRTA2. IRTA What's up, Lance? Now, Lance? Lance is the boss. He's the boss. He is the boss. Yeah. Susan, you rock. Oh, geez, oh, man. Uh, thanks for having trouble getting a dash kit for my RAM. Everyone everyone only has the one with screw on wings. Ah, yes. Yeah. But yeah, no, you, you have it. You have. Why did I do that? Oh, I waved at somebody. I'm sorry. That's I waved. Okay. Sorry, Thomas. I you waved can, at you. You, you can wave um, to everyone. Yeah, no, I totally understand. But. Yes, if you do what we said, you'll be great. Uh, personal question, are you happy with the IRTA2 sales since you released it? Um, for the amount of effort that we're putting into it, as far as, you know, we're not, like we've had offers for other people to sell it for us, mm -hmm. um, which I'm still on the fence about. Uh, we knew it wasn't going to, you know, it's a very niche product. It works on an Alpine, I'm sorry, it works on an Apple device with a lightning connector. Uh, I am testing the USB-C. I'm testing very various connections right now. I started testing last night. Uh, last night's <coughs> testing didn't go very well, so I was kind of depressed. Um, but we're, we're moving along with it, and so we'll have more information on that shortly. But anyways, you know, it, it was it's built to work with a lightning device. And we knew that that was always going to be a problem, because especially for Android people that are like, if you're not on my team, you really, really, really suck. I'm not buying some clothes. You know, we, we knew that was always going to be a thing. Okay. Um, and there's really nothing I can do about that. I mean, it's, it's what it is. Uh, are they selling the way we want them to? Yeah. We're, you know, we're selling a couple a week, which is kind of what we figured it would do. Uh, it's a very you know niche product. I mean, guys, believe it or not, this is car audio. And you know everyone gets excited when they see like oh my god that guy sound a thousand of those sold a thousand of those so this is what i always tell people to get excited about selling a thousand of something um there's 50 <laughs> states okay so if you sell two per state that's a hundred and then so you know if you're selling 10 per state 20 per state 20 per 20 20 people in a state bought a product that's nothing that is that is nothing so whereas you know you look at other things outside of our industry and it's like oh yeah we sold a million in texas and you're just going what yeah so it's it's an interesting thing yeah. uh we did watch the world cup today go yes, america yes yes we did that was interesting yeah that was sweaty <laughs> Oh yeah, she gives me a hard time all the time, man. I mean, that's the joy of, of being married. We're all for the win, Mr. Berg. RailHighFi.com. Is he cutting the promo? Maybe we should just have him cut the promo and we'll insert it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm just having a good time. I'm just I'm just like waving to people because I keep taking my thumb and leaving it on the thing. I normally don't get to hold this. Alright. Uh like I say, also, uh is any more information about the Nakamichu? 10.1 inch floating screen number of cameras or what uh right now no we have no information on it whatsoever um maybe you uh, when did they say that was going to come out uh december no i don't know should be soon yeah um 
I was just trying to think, the soonest we'll see the guys in Nakamichi is February, so by yeah. then I'm sure yeah. all the information on it will be out. Um, if it's not on their website, I'm kind of surprised it isn't, because they were pretty excited about that, and they, they tend to be on point when it comes to releasing information, so... Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, that is that is one of the problems that we have when we do like live shows like that, and we talk to these guys... Um, for one, we're just amazed half the time that they talk to us because, to be honest with you, a lot of these guys are just scared and they don't want to talk to us. Um, or they, they they don't know who we are. Metro. Um, <laughs> that poor guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can go watch the video. Just make sure he installs that system before he goes to Canada. Oh, that's rough. I'd like to. Bobby's your alcohol. Well, the Diamond DSP, the subwoofer is glitchy without without device. Okay. If you use Android like me, you still need another device to see the signal. You know, it, it's funny um, because, you know, I'm an Apple guy. We all know this, right? We can all pretty much agree with the fact that Dean's an Apple guy. Uh, but I carry... Someone was talking to me the other day and they're like oh you're an apple guy and i go i have a i have a windows laptop in my backpack and they were like oh it's you know you probably got it at the swap me and i was like no it's a brand new man badass windows laptop and the, the the truth is is you know in our in my world i have to have both because you know in the 12 volt world like one manufacturer will, will be very nice and and like want to do something for apple and then the other one is like, I don't do anything for those guys. Screw you guys, I'm going home. So I have two really nice laptops that I always travel with because it's, it's just part of how it is. Could I do all of it on the Windows? Probably, but that's not the ecosystem I live in. You know, I like, I like the way this, you know, I like what I like, I guess. You know, just like, you know, if you don't like broccoli, you're not gonna eat broccoli, but you might, you know. If it's really good for you, you might just, you know, eat it really fast with, like, sriracha on it. Because, like, wow. sriracha is really good on broccoli. I'm just saying. Anyway. <laughs> Whew. Uh, trying to add a full stereo for a 2016 Acura TLX. Having problems finding uh, the parts for it. How do I integrate? Um, yeah, you're, that's definitely not anything that a lot of people make parts for. I don't know what it is about the whole Acura Honda. I don't know. It's weird. Um, stuff like that. It's like if, if Metro doesn't have anything and we're cutting harnesses, yeah. you know, and soldering our own. You know, a lot of, you know, something to think about. A lot of the times what we'll do is, you know, we'll cut the harness back to where we've exposed the good eight or ten inches of it. We figure out which our speaker wires are. And then if you're worried about, like, taking something out and put it back to factory, buy like eight or ten pin connectors male and female buy two of them two sets and yeah. cut the wire crimp them on solder it together whatever you need to do so that you can plug it back together and then when you you know to put the amplifier in you unplug it and then you plug in your ends and you make your own adapter um it, it's not that bad and it works you know if you're like i don't know how to troubleshoot it eh, then that's a little different story and well yeah might you know might want to learn that part first which we have tons of videos showing you how to do that so just something to think about yeah. running full active even with dsp crossover settings do i need to add caps to tweeters and mid-range speakers sure. okay now my answer to this is always no you don't because that's what the job of the dsp is however uh, i tend to forget that not everyone does this for a living or does it every day of the week or totally understands what it means to use a dsp and 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 just installing it because there's a lot of wires and there's a lot of connections hell just between you know the speaker and the output of the amplifier and the rate the source unit i should say between the speaker and the source unit there could be five different connections there and sometimes people just don't get those things right Mm -hmm. And uh, case in point, we had a gentleman, really nice guy, drove down from North Carolina, wanted us, I think it was North Carolina, wanted us to tune his system for him. And uh, wow, like he tried really hard, he labeled everything, and somehow it still ended up wrong. 
he had like tweeter on mid range, mid range on tweeter, subwoofer going, and everything was going in the wrong spot. The only thing that saved his installation were he the caps speakers. he put on his tweeters. Yeah, uh, it was it. It was the only thing that saved him. So. You know, in that case, like if you don't know what you're doing the first time at it, yeah, you might want to think about it just to play it safe. But no, I would never do that because that's what the DSP's job is for. And if your DSP decides to blow your speakers for whatever reason, you probably got more problems than a set of blown speakers. So that's a great price point for the knock. He, uh, he did say December. Well, there you go. Dang, thanks, man. Do, 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 do. How can I get my lossless from my iPhone to my DSP optical. Um, man, that's a wonderful question. You you were using the I using the camera adapter to get the USB output. To get the USB output, yes. I mean, there are plenty of videos on YouTube talking about that, but yeah, yeah camera the camera adapter to get from so you Apple. go to Lightning. Yes, the Lightning camera adapter goes from US from Lightning to USB. Yep, and then USB. You, you would have to go into some form of an optical reader. Yeah. Ooh. Or just go into a USB. Yeah. Mm, man, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm sure they exist, though. The Durango does have factory sub, but it seems like it's a very narrow bandwidth. Um. So, 2012. They may actually make an Amp Pro for 2012. Yes, it is very narrow bandwidth. It does have bass roll off. It has loudness. It has subsonic filter. It does suck. Um, I would head over to pack-audio.com, see if they make either an Amp Pro or a Sub Pro. One of those is actually real easy to integrate into because it was actually, they just, they have a real basic interface for it. But that would really be the only way to get a flat signal to the subwoofer. Um, you're always going to run into problems and especially in dodges when you're trying to integrate into the sub without using some form of um amp pro you, yeah so and if it's yeah it's I'm, i know they make a sub pro for that i would definitely recommend getting one of those what would you recommend for someone just to start using their using to tune their amplifier um you can either depending on if you're an iphone or android user you could pick up like an iTest mic or a u-test mic um you could buy an inexpensive dayton mic um you the iTest mic if you're an ipad guy you can get the iTest mic for like 120 bucks and you just take your ipad and you you stick it in the window of the car while you're tuning it put the test mic on the headrest um and then you know you can just like flip this stick it in the window uh, with maybe a suction cup mount or just rest it in or duct tape yeah. it to the window, whatever you want to do. And then you can look at the little graph while it's going up and down and tune the car. Yeah, um, or the audio frog. Yeah, or you could use, uh, you, well, that's, that's uh, you got to have a laptop for that. And that's like 200 bucks. So there are, so I test mic, you test mic, uh, or the audio frog, what is it, AMM1? U. UMM1? UM1? UM1. Yeah, you and one from uh, Audio Frog. I just saw the Pack Audio Harness interface 2018 Sierra Dumbos. The Pack Amp module doesn't reset sometimes. I have to unplug the battery for the factory radio to have volume again. That's strange. Is the unit up to date? That is the number one problem with all Pack pieces. Is that no one ever bothers to check the firmware on it because they don't really talk about that. That could be a known issue that they've pushed an update for. It could have been a product that's been sitting on the shelf for a year, so highly unlikely it's possible. And there's just an update needed for it. Um, the other thing too, is you could always try putting a toggle switch on the constant 12 volts and just, just toggling on and off um, the, the power to the radio um, because that's in the, the Amp Pro harness. Uh, but I would, I mean, I, I haven't ran into that. Actually, today we just took one out of a car that had been in there for like five years and never gave the guy any problem. Uh, we took it out because he was going with a new radio finally because the radio is now old and crappy. Yeah. Uh, you think the Metro people made fun of that guy? I don't think so. Nah, I hope not. No, I don't think so. I mean, it was just... 
you know, that was not a good day for him. Okay. <laughs> Bobby, of course you do. Uh, I just keep waving at people. I'm sorry. Uh, that's what Knox said, but things change. Okay. I just installed it. Okay, so why? I hate it when it, like, I'm Get seriously considering grabbing one for the Durango. Grab one for the Durango. Yeah, yeah, Do yeah. it. Uh, so did Christian change his name? Is that what happened here? Yes. Uh, why did you do that? Because you can change your name. Uh, thank you, first DSP installation as a DIY guy. Hey, hey man, it's all fun and games. It's all fun and games. Mm -hmm. um, start out small, don't make big changes. Don't make big changes. Make small changes. Small changes go a long way. That's all I have to say. Small changes go a long way. Um, it's a 2011. They, they've been making amp interfaces for Dodge before they made them for anything. Um, I, I would just, you know, pack-audio.com to see what they have. What was the best wideband speaker that you tested? Uh, it was, so the best affordable one that we tested was the Kenwood, Kenwood C2. C2. Yeah. Uh, had the most frequency range. And then the second one was the Morel MM2, which is the uh, mid-range. It's not even a wide, it's not even a wideband mid-range. It's just a mid-range, but it still played better than most of the wideband mid-range, which was actually kind of funny. Um, even Morel was like, Casey was like, I think I'm selling this wrong. <laughs> like, I should be selling this. Uh, so the MM2 is the is the shallow one. So it's for the Virtus Nano Carbon. So it's it's only like... Okay, do you see, do you see the fly just coming in front? Hey, get away from my grip. Go away. Um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're getting attacked. Something's not... Ah, We're getting attacked by something. Ah, it's not going to do nothing. I, whatever, I don't know, it likes my shirt. Hey. Yeah. Stop! Stop. Stop. <laughs> go away. Hang on, hang on, I can kill it. Yeah, yeah, kill it with the thing. <laughs> go away, go away, go away. Get out of here. No. Oh, you got it. Yeah, yeah he's gone. Dude, we got attacked. That was funny. Um. Anyways, yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah. I'm here installing a bass amplifier on a 2020 Chevy truck. Yeah. What car have you been working today? Actually, it's funny you should mention that. I worked on a Chevy truck this morning. Before you go, don't yes. forget to send you email, buddy. Um, I know he's really good at it. So. DNFChristmas at Yahoo.com with links to some pictures or just pictures in the email. Uh, DNFChristmas at Yahoo.com pictures to enter the Clean Water Challenge at Master Tech Expo 2023. Yeah. What were you asking me now? Uh, oh, what are we worked uh, what, on today? What are we working on? Uh, we actually worked on a Chevy truck today. We took out uh, his factory radio died, so we took the factory radio out. We put the new High 10 all-in-one dash kit into it, uh, and then we finished up the Gladiator from Sunday. Uh, that also has a High 10 in it. Apparently, this is just High 10 going crazy, running, running crazy, running wild on you, brother. Um, okay. Anyways. Dude, could you imagine if we had to have done, like, as many times as we took that radio in and out to just do, like, basic checking stuff, if we would have done it their way, how pissed off we'd be right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, I, yeah. I, was just, I, just, I would have drove it over there and it's smacked a, it's a somebody lot. right it's in the lot. face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey guys, how do you deal with an all-pass filter if there's no preamp solution for the car? Installing a PXE X09 DSP in it. Uh, can I still do time alignment? Um, no. No, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. You can. You can still do time alignment. It's just, at certain frequencies, it's going to sound weird, and it's just going to shift across the dash. The easiest solution, the easiest solution, if you're not summing any channels, so depending on what you're putting in, if it's just, let's say, front rear sub or just front and rear, um, is to put a key lock. So get a kicker key lock uh, because the key lock will, that, that, like, if, like, listen, if there's no amp pro, if there's no metro interface, if there's no 
iData interface. If Nav TV doesn't have anything, MoBridge is coming up. Fucking goose eggs. Oh, bad word. Coming up goose eggs. Nobody has anything. I'm putting in a kicker key lock. The key lock will DEQ the signal and make it as flat as it can, as long as it's within 12 dBs of adjustment. So anything above or below 12 dBs, it'll just get it as close as it can. And it'll also take up to two all-pass filters out of the scenario. So by out of it, it just, how you get rid of an all-pass filter is, let's say on the right channel, you have a 200 hertz all-pass filter, which is just that 200 hertz, the frequency is 180 to the rest of the frequencies. Uh, it'll put the same thing in the other side, thus negating the problem. So it's just like if you have a speaker that's positive and negative, and then you just do it like this, and now they're all playing the same thing and it negates the all-pass filter. You're not actually removing it, you're just adding that over to the other side, mirroring them. So think of it like if you have a subwoofer and one of them is backwards to the other and you get no, no sound. So at that frequency, you know, it disappears. You're gonna get a null because they're both trying, you know, you get a positive 200 and a negative 200 and you get, you get a null, it disappears. Time alignment does some strange stuff with that. So when you hit that null, everything disappears. And it's like, whoa, where, where did it go? And it's at a frequency that is high enough to where it's gonna be there all the time. Now, the other thing to think about when looking at an all-pass filter is if you're sitting in your driver's seat and it sounds like there's a center image, like if you're already, it, it, okay, so a lot of people, oh, I gotta take this out, I gotta get rid of it. Okay, hold on. Bef before you worry about trying to get rid of something, first figure out what it's actually doing. So sit in your driver's seat and play something with a strong vocal track that's coming, you know, that would naturally sound like it's coming out of the center of the dash. It's C, is the sound coming out of the center of the dash? If it is, damn, you're lucky because you don't have to worry about time alignment. That all pass filter, which is why they put them in there in the first place, is doing the work for you. So you, you don't have to do nothing. All you have to do is EQ it. Little bit. You know, just add some salt and pepper to it, which is the equalization. Mm -hmm. That's it. Use the all-pass filter. It's it's there to do something, and it'll do it with the new speakers. So if it's giving you a, a, the illusion of center, then let it do its job. You know, there's everyone always wants to get rid of these things, but yes, if it sucks, like if it's a Toyota and it just sucks anyways, yeah, I could see us. Let's let's get rid of it, um, and let's do it our own way. But if it's in like some of these other cars, you sit in there and like, damn, that's that sounds really good. And it's like, oh, well, pff, it's doing the job for me. I'm just gonna walk away. And at that point, keep in mind, because you have a DSP, it may not be a question of like, like try screw, playing with your balance and fader a little bit, okay? So like, let the all-pass filter do its thing, see if the center, if it's, let's say it's over to your, your, your side a little bit too much, go into the fader and try fading it over two clicks. If it moves to the center and everything sounds good, then that's a level issue and not an alignment issue. Because remember, level plays a lot into it. If your right speaker you're closer to is louder than your other speaker, then if you turn it down, it will move over. So you can do a lot with just leaving it alone and adjusting the level control, getting your crossover points properly, proper. So yeah, it, it's uh, go easy. You know, there's a lot of fun you can have and car audio um, by just experimenting with what you what it does, so to speak. <laughs> it's funny. Go all what? the way to the... All the way to the bottom? Uh, are you ever going to show us a video on how to wire up the Stinger radio? Oh, I mean, we did the one for the Jeep, which came for it, but God, like, no, probably not. What a nightmare. I got a lot of wires that don't do anything and it drives me nuts um i mean for the most part i mean who knows i'm never gonna say never but i mean at the end of the day it has all the same wires that everything else has it's just got a ton of extra stuff um one nice thing i do like about the high 10 is like the extra camera inputs all have trigger wires which i think is great because um, most people, it's like, oh, I want a front camera. How do I trigger it? Oh, you got to go into the radio and you got to hit front camera. And so it's like, oh, that sucks. And now if you use iData, you can have it come on like when it notices that you're going under 10 miles an hour for five seconds and automatically bring up the front camera just through software. But if you have a high 10, uh, you can use triggers. So you could actually put a button. Um, 
like in Sue's car from the factory, it has a button that says camera. You hit it and it pulls up the front camera for when you're parking. Uh, you can do that with a high tent. It's pretty neat. So I do like that feature. It's kind of cool. I don't know. Hey guys, listen, that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, um, get your entries for uh, Clean Wire Challenge at Master Tech Expo. That's get right. those in. Uh, DNFChristmas at yahoo.com. Pictures, please. Also, uh, the IRTA is on sale till midnight tonight. So make sure you head over and pick one of, your, one of those up. Coupon code is Haley, H A I L E Y. And the savings is $22.43. And if you're watching this next week when we do the recap show, sorry guys, you missed out. Sue's not making me turn it back on. You guys have a great night. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. We probably need to mute that. What? We got to mute that. What? Is that Rapino? Oh, no. That's that's a Japanese guy. What? 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 Um, we're, we're talking about working on a car. Why? I don't know. Because it's what we do. Oh, what's up, Marty? Hey. Good day, everyone. I hope everyone is having a fabulous Thursday. That's right, Thursday. Why are you so happy? I'm happy because... Mm. Hello from Holland. How did Holland do? Is, is there... Are they... Uh, yeah. Are they in the, in the World Cup? How's Holland doing in the World Cup? You work on cars? I know. Wait, what? I know. We actually work on Jeeps. This week is an exclusive Jeep week. Um, this is a Jeep week. This is Jeep week. Holy crap. This is... I want to say this is like the fifth, Four. fourth or fifth Jeep. Because you missed one altogether. Four. Finally, a six, <laughs> yeah, stick Jeep. Yes, this is a stick Jeep. I know. Um, what's... Oh, Marty's in Salt Lake. City? Yeah. Uh, this, this is a basic two-door. Um, got the cool... Uh, Echo Master through the factory wheel Jeep cam. So nice little. The cool thing about this, and I, there's a couple other people that make this mount, which is really nice. But the the problem is when doing a Jeep cam, you have to stay on this line right here. The nice, the set, one of the selling points of this is that it's it'll articulate like you can. You can bend it and turn it because it has like a screw point here, has a screw point here, has another screw point here. So this is actually four pieces of metal to get to this. Um, so if the hole's over here, you can do it. But there again, you're you're going to move the camera and moving the camera to here. Believe it or not, that's like 20, 30 feet when looking behind you. So if this is this is directly behind you, the camera is looking like this. Well, ow, or you're gonna hit this wall. Um, if you just wanna see behind you, it's great, but most people, when they have backup cameras, they're, they're using those to actually figure out the distance and what's left and right. Um, that's why, like, you know, Alpine makes that big one that comes out of the center here, which is really nice, or we'll take and we'll make our own mount, we'll remove this cover here, make a whole new mount, put our camera into this, because there again, you, uh, it, you know. Now, one of the things I would like radio manufacturers to do is add a, a crop feature into the radio. By simply adding just a crop feature into the radio, where you can zoom in and then move left, move right, you could actually solve all of that. So just like when you have a picture on your phone, your your phone, because no one has laptops anymore, or your, 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 your pad style device, you can zoom in and turn and twist. If they would just do that into the radios, then we could put the cameras wherever we wanted and crop them in and spin them. So, hmm. Can I use a Sony DSLR as a backup camera? No, no, because you can't mirror the image. Keep in mind, like these are, these are, yeah. So you gotta make sure left is right and right is left. Yeah, so. If your radio software did it, otherwise, no, you're screwed. No, I'm joking. Yes, go for it. Yeah, you can do whatever you like. It'd be only if you want to use it in the front camera. 
Saludos, Fernando. Hey. Mm, we're winning. We're winning? Yeah, that country. France? France? France. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah France is kicking ass and taking names. Yeah. Like, I mean, Germany's out. Costa Rica's out. Mexico's out. Mexico's out. We watched that tearjerker the other yeah, day. Yeah, I was crying. Hello from Lake City. What's happening? Good day, gents. What's up, fro? Hello. Hey, you know it's Thursday night, Fernando. You know what happens on Thursday night? Uh, it's Taco Thursday. <laughs> it's Taco Tuesday. Friday is Hi-Fi. Hi-Fi hi hi Thursday. Hi Friday is, uh, is the news. So Friday morning. This Friday tomorrow. morning. Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, news. Yes. Yeah. When tuning in the system, how big of a battery charger do you need for a normal system, and does it affect a frequency? Um, so this is the one we use. This is the Snap-on, I guess the holy grail of battery devices. Uh, that's really all we've ever used for that. Like I bought that specifically to do that. Um, but yeah, a lot of the times with the cheaper chargers, what you'll get is a is a buzz. You'll get in the system. That's you know. So if you're going to be tuning a system, man, you can try it. But most of the time, all you really need is like a 30, 30 amp charger, depending on how big the system is, because. You really don't need to run your sub amp for majority of the tuning, um, you know, cause you're just gonna have that off anyway. So, and, and you're typically only tuning like one channel. So it's not like the amps are drawing a ton of current. It's more like just having the car on. Um, so you don't need a big charger. When's the last time y'all did a Trans Am? Oh. Man, I can't even remember the last time we did a Trans Am. Probably like two or three years ago. No, a Trans Am? Yeah, we we, we, we did one oh, in here. Yeah. 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 But yeah. probably like more than three years. And that thing was... Oh, you know what? No. Remember the one we just did that didn't have a floor? No. Yeah, it didn't have... It was, it was missing the floor on this side or this side. And it was like wrecked and it was all nasty. No. Don't you don't remember that? Oh, that was the day you were out sick. Or you were out. That's the day you were out because it had a. Um, you know, when I'm sick, I come to work. No, it was, you were gone that day. You had to go do something. But no, because it, it had like an old school, like Boston acoustic amplifier in where the spare tire was. But I came late. I don't know. I don't know. That was the last one. It was rough. It was rough. Uh, can you come to the UK and build a lovely sound system for my VW California? Yes. I mean, I would love yes. to come to the UK. Yeah. I don't know if I want to work while I'm there. Just, yeah, why not? Just it's saying. Why don't we get, yeah. you know, why we get Peter to do it? Peter. Hello from 28 degree Akron, Ohio. Oof. Oh, look at that. Hey. Panama checking in. Panama. What's up, Steve? Enhanced installations. installations. What up? Class A, B versus D, Helix P6 or Helix C4. How far apart? Oh. I'm just going with the P6. I'm not even worried about the class A, B versus D thing. I mean, no. I'm not I'm not even losing any sleep at this point. Um, is there a difference? Yeah. Can you hear a difference? Maybe. Maybe you can. Um, do all amplifiers have a little bit of different sound quality to them? 100%. Um, you know, we, right now, he's got one of the baddest class A, B slash uh, or they call it A slash AB amplifiers, the Moscone 430 in his car right now. We had the Ground Zero Uranium uh, AB class with variable bias in there, uh, passive variable bias, whereas the, the, the 430 Moscone, I guess it'd be the best way to describe it, like active variable bias. Like it's actually capable of doing it on its own, which is kind of cool. Right. Um, as it does the slide, as Nick likes to call it. Um, I, 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 I don't know, sorry. Um, you know, and, and there again, we've had class, we had class D D's, stuff in your car. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a difference? Yes. I mean, if, if you're talking about, let's say, a $1,000 class A, B amp. I'm sorry, $1,000 class D amp compared to like a $2,000 class A, B amp. There's a difference. There's a, there is a difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, 
$89. But the know, Helix, you know, the Helix stuff all sounds good. It all sounds good. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think you're going to be able to find someone that's going to get in your car. You might, If you find that one guy, just, just punch him in the face. Um, they'll punch him in the face. Uh, that goes, oh, oh, you have a Class D. I can tell. <laughs> you smell that? Yeah, that sounds like Class D. I bar, that's why. <laughs> You had a Camaro box built, you have... Uh, I think we finally threw it away. No, we threw it away. We threw it away. Nobody want it. Yeah. I do that. You know, I, in my ad, I was thinking about this. I don't know why I didn't throw it away the other night when I was up there getting that stuff down for you. Dang. I still have that Camaro corner box. Oh, I thought you wanted to that, talk about that it. That the 6x9s. Oh, the 6x9s, the 7x10s. 7x10s, okay. that's right. Uh, yeah, I was an old school Trans Am guy. Yeah. Well, originally before I got the Camaro, if you recall... Before the the world fell apart the first time back in 2007, uh, they were gonna Pontiac. Before Pontiac was closed down, they were gonna come out with a new Trans Am based on that same platform, and that was what drew me to the Camaro because I was like, oh crap, because I'm not a Camaro guy. I'm not a Mustang guy either. I know I own have owned both and own the Mustang, but I'm not that guy. It's not. I, it's totally different. But I saw that Trans Am, and I was like, man, I have I would, I would smoking the Bandit that they made, and I was like, oh, Cars are like tools dude, for the into. I want that. Just, I wanted I wanted that so bad. And then they, Pontiac went out of business, and I was like, this is like the first car I've ever really wanted, and I can't get it. So, yeah. And I'm not going to buy one of those that they make here in Florida, because, uh, no. Uh, what's your thoughts on the now-discussed Boston Acoustic car stuff? Um, I mean, the Camaro had Boston, Boston mm-hmm. Acoustic in it. It's so, I mean, it's just, it's just a brand, man. You know, it's just Bose. You know, just buy some stuff. Saludos from Param- Saludo from Panama. Uh, y'all do awesome work. We try. Thank you. Uh, do you ever use the Audio Frog mic? No, I use the Audio Frog disc, but. No, I no. think we tried one when when no. you when because I never I never calibrate. Oh, well, no, I think I downloaded the REW software and then that computer died, and I haven't put it on That's this right. one because, yeah. uh, I mean, we've got so many RTAs, and uh, I don't know. I, I just, God. I want, I bought it for the disc. What? They score again? Oh, yeah. no, it's over. The commercials. I, I just wanted it for the disc because that disc is awesome. Yeah, uh, I think I, I think I threw it in the trash. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah, okay. How hard is it to bake? How hard is it to bake door of a how f- bake door single cap, or should I have it professionally done? What year? Uh, I'm thinking he's probably talking about the plastic one. I mean, if it's the plastic one, don't even bother, man. Just like go around the speaker, uh, little pieces. Well, no, but you know everyone wants to full go bake inside. Potato. Yeah, I mean, hey, if so, you have the it, time. It, it, the, the hardest thing about so Amazon sells these little suction cups for your window um hang on so Amazon sells these little window suction cups and there's two suction cups four suction cups total and what they're designed to do is you roll the window all the way up you put one here you put one here you put those on the other side and that and your window is suspended over the top of your car when you get the Dodge Ram door panel off there's a screw hole here and a screw hole here. There's two screws. You pull those out, and that is going to free the window from the track. Roll the window back down, put the track down, and then you have all these screws all around here that you can then pull this off. Now, there's also a bar that's over here that is, that's a pain. That's a pain, but you can probably get it back far enough to where you can get all your sound treatment in. I mean, you can still get that bar, but it is, it is, it's fun. Um, and then you take the whole the plastic out and you can fill that whole thing up, put it back in, put the bar in, line the window back up, roll it in, put the two screws, and you're done. It's just time consuming. And whether we do it or you do it or whoever does it, that's time. it's just time. You just it's just time. So personally, if you can figure that out, like I just explained, I made it sound pretty easy. It's not hard, it's just time consuming. So if you got the time, we've got the beer, middle of time. My 13 Camaro SS had the factory Boston, and it was horrendously bad. Yeah, I would. I never really liked it. I took mine out. So, the factory Boston system in the car consists of a center channel, 
tweeters, mid bass, and then rear coaxles. There was a, a mid range, like a middler, and then six by nine in the back, and then the six by nine was a subwoofer. So it's like seven channels of audio, and it's variable voltage out of the radio. So it's like a set of RCAs out of the radio. So what I did, um, and I'm sure there's a car stereo lab on it, and or, and or it was the PXE0850S review that we did. I bought the Alpine eight channel DSP because it was the same size as the factory amplifier. I made a T-harness, plugged it in, and that gave me basically the same amount of power that it had in the factory, but a fully adjustable DSP. Back then, that was cool because there wasn't a lot of small seven or eight channel DSP, but now Helix has match, the match amplifiers. You have the Helix P8, um, you have a Forza, uh, you have the Prima, Odyssey stuff. So there's lots of small eight channel amplifiers that are pretty, on, pretty awesome. Uh, Fernando, I need that Morel coffee mug. Do you have a Morel coffee mug? Yeah. Over there? Yeah. Not here. I got a home. Collect, I got a collection of mugs at home. Yeah, I have the black one. You just gotta talk Facebook. to Natasha, man. Buy some speakers. I know. Those, I, I talk to Natasha. I some coffee this morning. I don't drink coffee. I did. Every yeah? day. Every day. Every day? Every day. Okay. Okay. I've never drank coffee. Okay. Yeah. Never have. No beer, yuck. Oh, sorry. Uh, when using DSP with the master volume control knob, do you set your head unit at max volume or just below it to avoid clipping? You want to find out where the... Yes. Yes. What you're saying is just to avoid clipping. Find the sweet spot on your volume knob to where the power band is maxed out, but yes, it's not distorting. So when you think of a volume knob, they don't, they don't, they're not a vertical line like this. They're more like this. Okay, so you want to find that, that point on this line that you're getting the, the most amount of voltage, the most amount of signal, and it's the flattest. Okay, now that is important because a lot of these radios that have loudness, all right, you want the flattest output. This is where an IRTA2 comes in handy. You remember the IRTA2? Yes. Uh, it's the little two-channel device that we sell to connect to your iDevice. device. This is a lightning connector. Um, electrical RTA. Electrical RTA. That's right. And with the electrical RTA, you can look at the f not necessarily how much voltage you're getting out because you can do that with a digital multimeter, but you can look at the electrical signals, play some pink noise, and turn the volume up until you see that signal get flat. Okay, and then when it's at the loudest point where it's flat but not clipping, that's a great place to leave your radio and then do a tune. Um, because you'll have a nice, <laughs> I know it's crazy, you'll have a nice flat output going into the DSP that you can then tune and attenuate through the DSP. It's it's pretty, pretty hardcore. Mm -hmm. um, but being able to look at the electrical signal output of a radio, you can see where your bass roll off, where your highs roll off, where the loudness roll off basically is happening and get it to that volume where you get the maximum amount of signal. It's pretty cool. I don't know. What would be the best kit to get? I don't know what the first part of the question was. What are y'all thoughts on Museway DSP amps? So the Museway DSP amps use the, um, we call it the Chinese software. That's not a bad thing, because I know that word is considered bad. No, it's just, it's a, it's a software that is, uh, I'm not going to say open source, but it's fairly reasonably priced for manufacturers to buy. And it's solid DSP software. So, like, over on the DSP shelf, like, Alpine uses that software. Um, not me. Not me. me. It, it, it's like six DSPs over there that all use that software. And Museway uses it, too. And it's pretty cool because they give you a lot of options for power. Um, and it's extremely, and it's reasonably priced because they're not. It is a good. You know, so it's good value for yeah. sure. And supposedly it sounds really good. I haven't heard a lot of it, so I, I can't equate to that. But I think it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, and we got a buddy now that's working for him. So at some point we can get him on and have him Mr. tell Joseph. us. Off. Yeah, Mr. Joseph Norton. You can get him on and have him talk talk about it. Uh, I definitely need that coffee mug, Natasha. <laughs> uh, I just realized Abraham hasn't been in here lately. School must be wearing him out. Yeah, you're right. He hasn't been here. Abraham. He hasn't yeah, chimed in in a that's while. That's right, yeah. Huh. yeah. Yeah. Good call, man. Hey. Hope he's he okay. He was doing school, so that's good. Yeah. School is great. 
What's up, guys? Hope y'all are doing well. When a radio has subwoofer for pre-outs and a four-channel amp has a pre-amp output as well, the signal is basically the same, correct? To add a mono block. Not necessarily the same, no. Um, if we're talking about bandwidth, meaning from X frequency to Y frequency, it should be as long as you haven't turned a crossover on in the radio. Because keep in mind, if you have front rear sub output, more than likely there's going to be a higher low pass crossover built in the radio. And if someone accidentally turns that on, and you're using, let's say, front and rear input into the amplifier and getting your non-fade output out of that amplifier, well, all of a sudden you lost all your bass. That's kind of a bummer. Secondly, if the radio has a subwoofer output and you want to use the subwoofer level control built in the radio, now there's multiple uses for that. If your amp comes with the bass knob, definitely use that because it's way easier. Mm -hmm. However, if you're somebody who has a multi-car driving family, meaning let's say your sibling or your young child or somebody drives the car, um, or you just park it places where you have to hand the keys to somebody and they're gonna you can always go in and use the subwoofer level control built into the radio to turn the subwoofer down so that if they're gonna be like beaten down in the parking lot when you're not there like they can't because you've turned the subwoofer down so if it's got an output on the radio I always use it that's I guess the long and short of it but yes you it'll work either way what what tool comes after the IRTA Dude, like, I gotta sell more of the IRTA 2s to afford to come out with a new tool. Like, that wasn't cheap, and I still haven't paid for it yet. So, slow it down, killer. If everyone had one, you know, then we could come out with another tool, because I'd have money to spend on it. But, you know, privately financing this channel is killing me. Uh, when, when tuning, what volume do you tune? Does it matter what volume it's at? And again kind of back to that original question or that original comment about trying to figure out where the radio is doing the best output um knowing your volume so if like we're talking like an aftermarket radio or something that we know has a like a fixed eq i mean it doesn't matter what we do um you want to have it at a reasonable volume so listening a little louder than listening um because I don't know. I just, that's how I do it. So, like, I'm not going to sit in the car and listen to pink noise just yelling at me, but I want enough pink noise to where it's, so, I'm not going to say a little less than two-thirds, maybe. Yeah. I'll just check, maybe. Oh, yeah, for Abraham. Um, what 10 should I put in the F-150 Fox acoustic box? Well... Funny you should ask. Normally we'd say the Comp RT10 sound really good. However, it's a Fox box, so that box we put. A lot of times we do the Alpine R Type because mm -hmm. the Alpine R Type has an awesome grill. It's an aluminum speaker, and it just sounds really, really good in that box. Um, I haven't tested it recently because he just changed a lot of it. So I don't know if the P3s still fit because the Rockford P3s have a big, bigger grill than most. But one of the other things that's really cool about all the new Fox boxes is if you're a kicker square, square sub guy, so like if you want an L7T, uh, on the boxes now, you if it should be a circle, but then there should be four corners that are routed into the top of the box. So if you want to go L7Ts, which I don't think you could fit, you might even be able to fit an L7R in that, which is the normal depth one, you can cut the hole. Make so sure it gives you, you check the hole. It gives you guidelines. But yeah, lots of options. Yeah. What's up, Arturo? Arturo. Hola. What's up? Uh, awesome. Thanks for the response. No problem. Everybody buying an RTA too. Well, you Everybody buying an you, RTA too. DNR to right now. I test mic from audio control. Well, actually, that's kind of like the you know that's. So Brian Mitchell from ARC, one of the things he loves to talk about, um, which makes me feel all warm and fuzzy, is like he travels with um, an IRTA2 and an iTest mic uh -huh. because it's small, it's compact, it fits in his backpack, and he has an acoustical and an electrical RTA that he can plug right into his phone and see what the hell is going on with any system he encounters. So that's, yeah, that's kind of like the coolest thing. Yeah. Um, but if I was to come out with an eye test mic, 
I, I definitely go broke. Um, if money were no object, is there any equipment you would use that you don't have access to now? Um, so I can think of three amplifiers I would like to own okay. if money was no issue. Okay. I would want to have either Tony's, Tony D. Moray's big amps okay. that Steve has in his truck. Yep. Um, I would like to have the Thesis Ventes. Venti. Yep. Mm -hmm. I can't even pronounce it, so it really doesn't matter. The coffee. <laughs> Isn't that a coffee? <laughs> it is yeah, a coffee. yeah, it's a coffee at Starbucks. Yeah. So I'd like to have the Audison Starbucks coffee amplifier. Yeah. Or I'd like to have those new Ground Zero uh, Pros that they just came out with. Oh, that they just came out, yes. Yeah. Those are the three amplifiers that are so mm -hmm. far out of like realistic price points. What about the Wave? The uh, British amplifiers? Those are cool. Yeah, the like the set Pate got. Yeah. Like those are those are cool. Yeah. And that would be that would probably also be on the list. I just Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, I those are I, I give that a those solid are, four. Those are those are solid. Yeah, I give it a solid four. I don't know man. I just those those three Hmm, that's tough. Yeah. yeah. No. But there you go. Those are those are four like holy god. Yak do! What's up? What's going on, guys? It's a Jeep, man. Can't you tell? I feel like it's a canvas top. It's a Jeep. It's always a damn Jeep. This week is nothing but Jeeps. Yeah. It's strong. Uh Dean, I have enough test tools. I think you can never have enough test tools. Are you no, kidding you me? You can never have a test tool. Dude, the, the anytime you say you can have enough tools, man. That's when Dude, you need to. You, you just you just buy the uh, the digital multimeter. It's not a digital multimeter. It's no, it's actually, capacitive uh, tester. Capacitive tester. You yeah, know? it's like yeah, because oh. we we had so a capacitor going bad. We had a capacitor was going bad. We needed to know what it was. Yeah. And so we needed to know the the value of the capacitor. We had one that worked. We had one that didn't work. But there was no stickers, so it was like, all right, how do we figure out the capacitor values? There's a tool. And of course, I talked to my buddy Joe at Kicker, and he says, Well, we use this. And I said, My buddy Joe. And I go, Bye. And so it came here two days later. Didn't help us that day, but I we will never have that problem again because <laughs> now we can tell you exactly what value that capacitor is. Yeah. So, you know, that was, that was cool. So, and we didn't even know that tool existed because why would I need no. it? Yeah, I don't. Exactly. But I have it now, and I thought I was doing good. I'm looking forward to getting that IRTA2. You have explained so well on how to use it. Hey, man, hey, we, we're trying. DNF tool drawer, man. Uh, I test mic run off AC Apple apps. Audio control app up. So the I test mic was made That's specifically Christian. for yeah. uh, Studio 6. Yeah. Okay, so Studio 6 is, is who is partnered with audio control for the I test mic. The software is Studio 6, so if you just go download the Studio 6 um, RTA, it's literally called RTA, that is, that's the, you pay for it, and that's what I run. I don't use the audio control version of it, because, uh, test your mic, Mortal Kombat parody. <laughs> Fatality. No, Mortal uh, Kombat. Dude. No, I, I, I want to play. No, I, I, I no, so... No, I'm not gonna put the Brax amps oh, in that cabinet. Brax. No, I'm not not gonna do it. No. Really? No, no, huh. no. Because okay. I no, it, I just those were not fun. They uh, sounded great. I don't care. I did like having to screw the power wire up from the underneath, flipping the amps over to mount them down. Well, it depends. That, that was, was a killjoy for really, me. Dude, the was... DSP all day long. But, uh, I'll take a $6,500 like, DSP. You know, Hell it's yeah. Not fun to mount it, but no money so it's like Listen, the, the money is no issue okay, you so, can do whatever yeah, yeah. you want well, well, for the money, like right. I said if the money's no issue I'm not getting those I'm not gonna get them I'm not oh, gonna fine. Them. sorry guys sorry Julian I love your product I do no, but that's that's, want, not, that's not what I want that's not what I want we're just talking right now let's go Pro 430 is way out for me GZ Uranium would be feasible get a better job Christian come on man kill more bugs my dream amp is a rack full of Crown PA amps. Ooh, yeah. Dude, so, funny story. You, you, know, wow. Crown, you know the Crown PA amp. By the way, Crown is owned by Harmon International, which is now owned by Samsung. Mm -hmm. That means JBL. Anyways, so, 
a, 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 when I worked at AVE, the guy that worked there before me, a guy named Scott, lived up in Georgia. And I've talked to him about him before. He used to build these home towers. So he, he'd build cabinets about the size of refrigerators. Mm-hmm. They have two 15s, and then it have an array from, like, these were eight feet tall. Mm-hmm. It'd have two 15s, ported boxes, and then it from top to bottom would be an array of six by nines. Okay, so you can imagine how many pairs of six by nines you can put in an eight foot from floor to ceiling. Mm-hmm. Basic math. Anyways, and so what he would do is he would have a rack of Crown amplifiers because Crown was like reasonably priced mm-hmm. um, to power everything. So he would just show me, and he would just, he was one of those guys that I don't know how he made his money, but he always had money. But he would just go from pawn shop to pawn shop from here to Georgia and just buy, you know, there's always, he's like, dude, I always find these things. I'm like, how do you find, really? He always finds these crown amps, so that's why yeah. he went. So he would just have racks of crown amplifiers. I was like, he goes, dude, they live down a farm road. So he goes, he's like, you know how people do with their cars? And they walk, he goes, dude, I, I did it with my house. Very cool. And I was like, you suck. Very cool. Uh, Jeeps and F-150s. I know, man. I just jipped this week. Put Haley through college. Um, do you guys have a shop or installer you would recommend in San Antonio, Texas? Arturo. Yeah. Uh, Ar- audio, audio by Art. Yeah, Audio by Art. He was just on here a minute ago. Yeah. It was Ola. But yeah. Audio by Art. Yeah, he's in San Antonio. He's for sure. Texas. He's in San Antonio, Texas, though. Um, for brute power, would you choose Fosgate or Kicker for subs? For power? Are we, like, talking amplifier-wise? I mean, if today, today, right now, today, amplifier-wise, I'd probably choose, uh, 100%, I would okay. choose Rockford. What? Subs, no? For so for brute power, for brute power, would you choose Rockford, Fosgate, or Kicker, or kicker for, subs. for your subs? But he's asking about power, though. Okay. So to power, I'm assuming to power the subs. Kicker doesn't offer anything bigger than the CS twenty four or eighteen hundred right now. Mm-hmm. The Warhorse amplifiers aren't available. Rockford yeah. sells the twenty five hundred. Yeah. So and six other amplifiers that are gigantic. So I would I would have to choose that. Mm-hmm. And then if we're looking at like who's got the baddest subwoofer on the block, Rockford still wins that. Because the Solo X or whatever the hell it's called, the L7, is, yeah. Solo, whatever, the Phantom speaker isn't out. So the best thing we're going to have is, is that? the Q class, right. you know, which is right there. So if we're looking at the best woofer available on the market right now from Kicker, it's this guy right here. Okay. And then if we're looking at the best available speaker from Rockford, it's this guy right here. So, I mean... Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't feel it's that hard. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a tough one. Um, so, uh, the new Lumi black background can read cap values. I pick. Oh, very cool. There you go. Very cool. Yeah. Um, what mono amp should I pair with the Fox Box and the F one fifty with the Alpines or Kickers? Um, uh, you know, most of the time in the, in the F-150s, we're doing a DSP amp, and by far our most popular DSP system uh, to date right now has been the audio control stuff, so we usually use the LC1.800 uh, from audio control on those. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's our most popular amplifier for the F-150s. Uh, every now and then, if someone goes like full crazy, we'll do like the D61200 and the LC1500. But really, all you really want is to get something somewhere in that uh, 8 to 1000 watts range is plenty. Um, if you're a kicker fan, you could do the kicker 1200.1. That would work. The nice thing about the 1200.1 is it is stop start compatible. So if you're planning on keeping the stop start, all those CS amplifiers will do stop start. And then they do make the Marine 6 channel uh, in that same CS line. It's just like the CS with the green stripe and a 6 channel. Works really well. Then you just go with an external DSP. Nikki 6. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a good movie. Um, did your first company AV out of biz? Out of business. Yes, it is out of business. They. Um, I left. I was there for 21 years. Uh, it was right up the street actually here 
Clearwater. Um, and when I left, it stayed open for about another four years, three, three or four years. I'm gonna say four um, years. He sold it to the installer that he had at the time. Um, and then that installer tried to sell it again because he was more interested in getting high or drunk. And he tried to sell it to somebody else, but he had borrowed money to pay for it. And so the people that he had borrowed money from were like, no, no. And so it just became a big arguing match. Or, and then it just, so it just closed up after that. And it was a happy day for me. It was, it was very painful to watch something that I had put 21 years into just just turned really, really bad. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it, was it, it was, it, it wasn't like, you know, we, we didn't leave on the greatest of terms, um, because the company was just falling apart and, and, and they weren't doing anything to save it. And so watching it just flounder, you know, it, it's watching it die for the next four years was very painful for me. So when it finally died, it was like, oh, thank God. Um, Cause it's like your life's work and then you leave and then it just turns to crap and yeah but i had to leave because i it was it was it was bad um do you have a recommendation installer in california dude there's dude california oh from tip to tip man there's installers everywhere in california um the best thing to do is figure out where in california and give uh, paragon mike mike rios who's been on the show uh, it, it, it's a, what is it? Paragon marketing, Paragon marketing. Look for Paragon marketing here on Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. Paragon marketing handles tip to tip Arizona. To, to, okay. That whole area. Um, they're going to know who the good guys are in California. So, uh, if you're in the middle, check out junior at audio systems. Uh, you have Gary Bell. Uh, yeah. Well, he's, he, he, I don't think he can get, I think he's booked until sometime middle next of next year, year. uh <laughs> jaime over at agora auto sound jaime yeah that's what i said yeah um there's there's a ton of guys out there and, and uh, it's it, but yeah if you reach out to the paragon guys they're the reps they'll they'll tell them what you want to do and then mike mike up. mike yep watching your camaro vid from four years ago at the moment there you oh, go wow gosh all the hair i had um, do you ever have nightmares about still working there? I sometimes do about my first job at Sonic. Hundred yes. percent. Oh, dude, we we laugh about it because I'll come in and go, dude. You're not gonna believe it, man. Had another AV dream, and uh, it's it's funny because some of the dreams I have are about you know getting the band back together again. Those type of dreams where it's like because it went out of business. So sometimes I have the dream where like he's gonna get back into it and he calls me up and we go over there and like we just leave and then somewhere through the dream I'm like well, what about five star? Oh crap, you know, who's doing the work over there? Um but yeah, so it's almost like the bad high school dreams you had where you forgot your locker combination. Like those. But yeah, I still have those. It's it's pretty that's yeah, it's a bad night. You know, I just wake up and laugh and I go, oh, Fernando's going to love this story tomorrow. I like my Dayton DSP, but putting extra features aside, is the Helix DSP Pro that much better sound-wise? Um, that'd be like comparing a grape to a watermelon. Yeah. They're not even on the same. That's like, that's like, no, man. Yes, it's, it's like, it's, it, I can't even give you a good analogy of the difference there other than to say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get just, the Helix. If you got the money, get the Helix. You'll soon figure out why. Um, how far are two and Oscar from one another? Uh, Dallas in San, San Antonio. I mean, Oscar's in Oscar Dallas. Oscar is in Dallas. And, and Art, is in, Art San is in San Antonio. It's a big state, kind of like California. <laughs> Woo! Good. Relax. Like five hours. There you go. It's like five hours apart. Uh, so, so that basically means that um, Oscar could never make the trip in his Tesla. It'd take him three days. For what? To get from uh, Dallas to San Antonio. I don't think he'd like to go to San Antonio. I don't think he could drive that far in that car. It's got the small battery. Which four channel amp you recommend for Focal ISU 165s? I'm debating between a Focal amp or a Rockford. Any other you recommend for 2000 uh, Honda Accord? 
We've talked about this a lot when I say I kind of like um, amps as tools. So one of the Honda Accord systems that we do that I really like, I really like a lot, is going with the Rockford um, Mini T's, Mini Power Amplifiers. They make a five channel and they make a two channel. So they make a 400 by two and then the five channel. What we like to do is take that with the DSR-1 if it's the standard Honda four channel output. And we'll go into the DSR-1, we'll put the front mid bass on the 402, and we'll take the five channel to power the tweeters, the rear speakers, and the sub. Love that system, it is awesome, that's, that's, that's really cool. Um, if you're trying to do a five channel to power everything, the punch five channel will actually fit underneath the driver's front seat, which means the four channel will fit, but I really like the Mini T's the most out of all of that. Um, although we've doing a lot, a lot of the new punch marine five channels in the, in the JL slash gladiators because that, uh, which we showed the other day because that amp rack that Metro makes fits that. I mean, it's almost like that was made to go there and it just fits so perfect. And it's like, I love this combination now. And Rockford is super happy because it's like, oh, Dean's talking about our amplifiers. Yay. Well, they made the right one that fits. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but there you go. That's any, any one of those are great. Um, oh, you know, Focal also has the 690, which is really cool. I like the 690 because that gives you that really, that lot of power on the sub, but yeah. Christian, what, what you don't dream about working on audio? No, no, I don't. No, I don't dream about this place that often. Uh, good afternoon, fellas. Hello, friends. Good afternoon. Bless you. Bless you, too. Live from Knott's Berry Farms, it's b -b 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 Bobby. Uh, any updates on IRTA USB testing? Yes. Uh, I did some testing the other day that did not yield anything exciting, meaning that it didn't work. I ordered some new parts that are supposed to be here Saturday, so hopefully I'll be able to do some more testing this weekend um, or at that. So... I'm currently testing um, and not 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 excited about it. So, but as soon as I know one way or the other, I will let you guys know. So, yes, live from Disneyland on Sunday, Saturday. Oh. Um. Oh yeah, he's looking. Christian's looking for apps that work because Christian's got mm -hmm. he's got yeah, it right. and he's got Android. So yeah, he's good. Work faster, Christian. Uh, Dean, there's a girl I like, but I'm scared to talk to her. Any tips? I'm a big fan of honesty, like, to a fault, if you guys haven't picked up on that, because I'll say things that will get me in trouble, even though I try not to. Um, that doesn't bode well when talking to women. Um, I don't know how I convinced Sue to go out with me in the first place, because... Like, she knew me because we went to high school together, and we never talked during high school. Like, we had classes and stuff. And I was actually friends with her boyfriend at the time, um, and still am, which is cool because, like, we actually all just went out when we were in Georgia. To, I'm sorry, when we were in Tennessee. We all went out to eat. Um, and he's married and all that shit, so it was really cool. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I can tell you the stereo really didn't work because they all said that would, and that didn't. Um, I, I I got nothing. Ask her if she likes Star Wars. That's the other thing too, man. Girls are a lot of nerds now. Like Haley, like like Haley, like Legos and, and nerdy shit. And like, man, that's so cool. Like I, when we went last weekend, when we went to Disney. We went to Legoland or to the Lego store in downtown Disney, mm -hmm. and they had a Santa Claus sleigh, like with reindeer, mm -hmm. and then they had the haunted mansion from Bobby's um, Disneyland, not Disney World. Uh, and earlier this year, she bought the miniature castle. So we have the giant Lego castle, and then she bought the miniature castle, which is only like eight inches tall. Mm -hmm. And now they have the matching haunted mansion from Disneyland, which is strange because they don't have the Disneyland castle. That is, so the castles all have names. So Disney World has uh, that's Snow White's castle. Mm -hmm. Disneyland is Aurora's castle. Oh, she's Sleeping cool. Beauty. Um, so yeah, it gets really confusing. Anyways, 
Uh, we're doing front stage only set up in a Tacoma with a key 200.4. Do you run new tweeter wires, KS components? Uh, Tacoma, yes. Yes, you do. I, I would also recommend, you don't have to, but I would all, if, because you might get some weird center imaging on it. If you do, which you might, is run a key lock in front of the key 200.4. And that will give you a guaranteed best of both worlds because you will correct the signal issues that are there, and then you can redo the, the make them sexy with the key 200.4. So you may want to invest in a key lock. But yes, you're going to be running new tweeter wires. Uh, Rockford Mini Tees. Rockford Mini Tees for sure. Uh, to do the kicker 1200.1, would I need a key lock on the F-150 or it will function? De okay, so a couple things. Depending on the year of the F-150, I think anything pre-2019, you can, if you're going to run, a, if you're just running a sub, okay, so if you're just running a sub in your F-150, grab the driver's front door, you'll be great. It'll work fine, okay? You, you'll, you'll be perfectly cool. Uh, the little 6 dB bass boost on the, the kicker amp is enough. 1,200 watts is enough. You'll get plenty of bass out of the car. Now, if you're going to be doing a high amp also, this is in the F-150 pre-2019. If you buy the iData DFO2 and the AR, all right, you can reprogram. You can use that to reprogram the factory radio. Basically, what it's doing is the all the stuff that um, Forescan does to the factory radio. So for those people that don't want to deal with Forescan or pay for the licensing and all that nonsense, the DFO2 with the AR will allow you to plug in, you do some cool stuff with your steering wheel controls um, to reprogram it, and then you just leave the AR in and it gives you four volt line level, perfectly flat, awesome signal output of the factory radio to go off to your new high amp and sub. So that's, that's pretty awesome, you know. You can also do it with a DSR1. But you can do it with the AR, and the reason why you can do it with the AR is to go to anybody else's DSP or EQ or whatever you want to run. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, you guys, speaker always get them. I don't know what Yaktil means. Uh, Tommy, who? What's up, Tommy? Are you guys coming to Master Tech Expo? Are we coming to Mac? How did. Yes! Dude, not only were you coming to Master Tech Expo, holy crap, we're way into this. We are running the 12, well, it's not 12 volt. We were running the Clean Wire Challenge yes. that anyone can enter to be lucky. So right now, you can win, you can enter to participate in the Clean Wire Challenge. There's eight people we're going to choose. We are going to choose. It's not random. We're literally going to choose it. Anyone can enter. So what it gets you is a pass into the Master Tech Expo, so it saves you the $800. Um, you just have to buy your plane ticket in your hotel. Uh -huh. Anyone can enter. All you have to do is send us like eight or ten pictures of or send us your Instagram or Facebook account that has clean wire pictures to D and F Christmas at yahoo.com. If you send us a link to some pictures to look at, that's all it takes to enter. We're gonna choose the people yeah. that get to go. It's not random. It's it's literally and and it's so sad because like we're not getting tons of entries, and there's eighty thousand members to the twelve volt clean wire club. That means there are at least half that forty thousand people that do badass wiring that could possibly go to Master Tech Expo for free. Into the expo, you got to get there on your own dime and stay. You know, you could stay yeah. in a car. I really don't care, but. All you got to do to enter, dnfchristmas at yahoo.com. The email that we use for all our giveaways. Mm -hmm. Send us a link to your pictures and or give us pictures. Yeah. And we'll you automatically get entered. And we're going to announce the winner the first week of January. So you have a whole month to enter. Yeah. To, to, I mean, it's going to be awesome. Dude, and let me tell you what. This is the best part. This is what you guys own. This is one of the best giveaways ever. Because you get $800 worth of entry cost covered. And not only that, not only that, the three sponsors, the three big key sponsors, HKI, which is Sound Digital Ground Zero, mm -hmm. Audison, or Electromedia, let me say that, Electromedia, which is Audison Hertz, and then Orca, which is Focal, Gladen, and Moscone. You're going to get an 
a system from them. So like the, the power side. So you're either gonna get like two amplifiers, an amplifier and a DSP, the wiring, the distribution, you gotta wire it up to win. You okay. Take it home. You finish it you, and then you take it. You're gonna home. take it home with you when you're done. Yeah. Like it's yours. Yeah. Like you're gonna win, like just for competing, I mean, dude, and, and what they're gonna give us, like like we were talking with Audison uh, Electromedia the other day. Like, holy crap. Like, it's it's insanity. And I'm like, dude, these guys are not entering this. Like, these guys are, like, so, dude, literally, some of you guys are some of the most badass wires out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, great, yeah, I do it for a living. But, like, you guys, like, holy shit. And this is one of the best competitions we've ever had access to. I get it. You still have to pay for the hotel. You still have to pay for uh, the flight. But that's, that's food like... Food is included. Food is included. I mean... You, you got, need a lot of people it, it, there in the it's, industry. It's like, holy crap. Why? Cool. I, uh, I, in, I understand. But dude, you learn a lot on every, those classes. Yeah, not only that, you get to go to the Master that's, Tech Expo. That's what I'm saying. Like, those classes are... It's like the Clean Wire Challenge is just this little cool part of it that, yeah. like, you get to compete in and, and like, badass. I mean, don't get me wrong. The guy that wins this is going to be the shit. Cause, but it's going to be... Like, the- He's, yeah. he's going to get all of well, He's, he's going to be the ruler. He's getting all the women. That's all I have to say. He's getting oh, all really? Or guys, whichever he prefers. I mean, I want to win. But, okay. Yeah. Um, but no. So, yes, we'll be at Master Tech Expo. And for the love of God, people. Go enter. Put put up or shut up. Stop being some wusses, man. Go enter. D and F Christmas at Yahoo.com. Send me links to your pictures or send me your pictures. No, That's all pictures, it takes. Please. No naked pictures. <laughs> Keep it clean. Um, where can I get loop back harness to connect amp speaker wires to a factory speaker and a 2015 GMC? 2005. Sierra yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah. I saw the five and just me. It was like, what? Um, um, Metra. Go to metraonline.com in the yeah. search tab. Type in amp bypass. Yep. Uh, like type in GMC amp bypass or GM amp bypass. Um, and see what they have, because that's that's where I'm gonna go to look. Yep. Disney. Oh, how I miss these. Some year. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I I'm hoping. I'm hoping you get yeah. to go, and then we'll meet you there. Women change once you marry them. No, Sue hasn't. I mean, no. She. I mean, she's still stupid enough to put up with me. I keep telling her, I'm like, dude, I I can't believe you hung out this long, like. It's going on like 27 years, 28 That's years, crazy. something like that. It's ridiculous. I bought an audio control DM608 to use with my factory radio. Will using an epicenter as well be overkill? Nope. Not at all. Not at all. Epicenter is awesome. Ooh. Speaking of audio control. Oh, you know what this is. Bet you don't know what this is. It's not what it says it is. It's something better. Ooh. You guys will find out soon enough. But we got to play with it today. It's so sexy. That's pretty cool, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, although I don't know what I was more excited about. This or the other thing. Because the other thing is pretty nah, sexy, too. Nah, the other thing. The other thing wins? Yeah, this is not. You're, so, you're such a killjoy. Yeah, no. You're such a killjoy. <laughs> I do, no. I'm pretty excited about both. Good afternoon, gents. December already. Got to get December? started on Christmas shopping. Yeah, you and me both. Uh, I'm a little behind. Actually, it's funny. I think the only Christmas present I brought is for um, uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Dude, Dean, I tuned a Helix DSP using their AF reference curve. Seems flat, boring, and definitely lost volume. Any advice? What I miss? I don't use their curve. I can tell you that right now. Um... Well, they say use it and then you can tweak it so you can actually play. So, sixty-eight hundred, eight thousand hertz are kind of the win. That little bump right there will add a lot of like high frequency character to the music. It's also things that can add like the sorty sounds sucks to it. However, a lot of people like that and it adds interest to the music. The other thing, too, is that if it has the capability of using the dynamic EQ, you may want to look into using that function so that at lower volumes it is more exciting. Um, but 
if you have an aftermarket radio, if it has a loudness feature, that also helps. Um, but yeah, if you it, so we did we did an interview, or I did an interview with Brian Mitchell, nah, I don't know, three or four months ago, and he kind of goes over and talks about some of the frequencies that are really particular in a system. Um, but I, I like I like a I like so for me. It starts out with a lot of bass and it starts to roll off. Um, I have a dip at 500 because I always hate 500. Um, most cars, 1,000 hertz, 1.2, 1.6 are way too high. I bring those down. Um, and then at the very end, I bring a little bunny hop in somewhere centered around that 5, 6.8, and 8. I put a little bunny hop um, because that really livens up the stage. The other thing, too, is if you're going active, uh, meaning tweeter mid-range mid-bass or tweeter mid-bass um, adjusting their volume properly between those is really important because that can totally make a system sound lifeless and boring um, if there's not if there's let's say too much treble and not enough mid-bass um, whatever you're lacking bring the other thing down so like you say oh there's not enough mid-bass bring the treble down bring bring the smaller speakers down um, and that'll add in more mid-bass um but yeah, yeah. Wow, that sucked. Oh, Bobby, Dean, they're scared. Why? I'm not competing. Um, I'd enter, but my mom said I can't go. Damn it. Uh, what is being installed uh, on the contest? So there's, it's a clean wire challenge. So you're going to get a, uh, which you can head over to mastertechexpo.com and check out the competitions. And there is the, the, there is the video that Brian and us did. You can find that on our channel. And there's also a link to the, the PDF that breaks down the whole challenge. Um, you're going to get a amp board made out of PVC or uh, ABS amp board, predetermined size. You're going to get the equipment, and then we're going to have their power wire ferrules and all that fun stuff. And the competition is just that. You have to make the prettiest amp board that you can in three and a half hours. And the, the after there's going to be four people one day, four people the next day. On the th third day, everyone is going to vote, and we're going to announce the winner. Or it might be late on the second day. Probably, probably after the competition on the second day. There'll be QR codes you can scan, and whoever gets the most votes win. You're getting a custom-made trophy uh, designed by Fernando, built by myself, um, and the honor of being the 12-volt clean wire king. Mm -hmm. Like, you're the man. You kicked ass. Uh, I'd be too scared. What if I mess up and other installers make fun of me? Don't mess up. 110% is for pussies. Uh, the equipment you are getting will pay for the trip. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Uh, trust me, because when I was talking, it's a whole other world, man. It's a whole other world. Uh, where is the show located, and what is being installed on the contest? So it's going to be a Master Tech Expo. They're again, it's in Mesa, Arizona. Head over to MasterTechExpo.com, and you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Can you do a video with tuning with a DD1 CC1 with a crossover? Please love your videos. Actually, we have plenty of videos where we use the CC1 and the um, DD1. Yeah. Uh, the most recent one that I can think of that would help you is if you go watch, go to the Car Stereo Lab playlist and look for the Ground Zero Uranium system that we put in. Uh, when we put that amplifier in, we painstakingly went through and showed you using the CC, CC1 and the DD1 mm -hmm. to set that amplifier up. So... Uh, yeah, definitely check that video out. Dean, I'll enter, but I'm driving myself and sleeping in my car. I would like to see you sleep in your car, Bobby. I don't think I don't think that would be comfortable for you. Uh, beta software for audio control? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, can you do a video on tuning amps? Okay, did that. Okay. I hate it when it repeats though. That USB might be audio controls test tones. Not test tones. There's no test tones. But there are test phones built into the DMRTA, yeah. And you can plug them in and update them and do all that. Can you do a video? Okay. Yes, we've done that. Okay, it's still there. All right. Non-car audio outside of iTunes. What is a good service to download and stream music? Uh, a lot of guys like Tidal. 
And then HD tracks is where you're going to buy high quality tracks. So that's HD tracks. And there you can buy high res music that you can download to a thumb drive. But Tidal is another one. Um, also, like Amazon Music, you can select high res. As well as Spotify, now you can select high res. So it's just a setting in your phone that you have to turn on. Yeah. But if you'd like to buy the tracks, HD tracks. Uh, one more DSP question, please. Audio control versus Dayton. I know Helix is the best. I would say Helix is the best. There is no best. Um, each, each piece has certain things that they excel at, but that by no means does it make them the best. Let's, let's just start with that. Um, there again, I am an admitted not a fan of the Dayton DSP. Okay, like I've given away two of them because I've told people how much I dislike that DSP. We reviewed the DSP. It is noisy. It is not fun. I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I gave it away. And then I bought another one and gave it away on the High Five Vegas show that's on tonight at uh, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, followed up by Reverse or Side Jag uh, at 10, something like that, 9.45, 9.15. Anyways, um, those two shows are on tonight. We'll be back live. So to me, almost any DSP is going to be better than the Dayton DSP, and I know like every time I say this, some guys, oh, somebody got competed in Iaska, and he did. I great, good for him. You know, I'm, I'm glad he got it to work for him. But working with the DSPs we work with and playing with that, I was like, no, man, not not gonna happen. Not not no. Mm. So audio control, love audio control. We installed tons of audio control. It's a, a solid DSP. Download the software, play with the software, see if it makes sense. If it does, whichever one is makes the most sense to use to you go with that one whether it's helix whether it's audio control they're both awesome dsps they both do what you're going to need them to do does helix have more features right now yeah um but are they the features you need i don't know but if it is then yes go with that what's up Haley? <laughs> let's, let's stop talking about her for sure hope you like jail dsp amps since that's what i'm bringing monday for my durango oh yeah no they're fine um yeah the only thing i don't like about those amps is that stupid connector you know the vxi printer mm -hmm. cable with the uh, that thing drives me crazy yeah Anyways, guys, hey, you know what? Like I said, tonight you can check out the show, Hi Fi Vega Network. That's we'll be, right. I'll be there live as usual on a Thursday night. Otherwise, you guys have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Does he look like a little kid stole a car? I feel like he, yeah. Yeah, right in there, man. The country. Yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely jamming out the country. I don't know which country he's jamming out to, but it's definitely country. Evening. How are you, man? What's going on, Chris? Frando. Yes. I don't know. What's up, Dean? What up? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Oh, hey, it's Mr. Lopez. Not a Jeep or F-150. Ha! I know, right? No, that was already done. We did that earlier today. I honestly don't remember. We did finish a Jeep today. No. No, we didn't do a Jeep today. We had that Ford this morning. The Ford. We finished the radio on the Ford. The, the 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 iData kit. That's right. Yeah, I know, I know. It was that. It was this morning. I know it's extremely painful. Nothing much bothered. Just getting stuff done for the last month, last quarter. You know. Oh, we know. We know. We're we're trying to get everything done too. We got a busy month ahead of us here. December is definitely going to be one of the <laughs> most busy months of the year as far as 
my life is concerned, but... Oh, and then we still have to do work, too, so, I mean, there's that, but whatever. You know, it's okay. <sighs> That's a big yawn. Uh, can you see over the steering wheel? Can you see over the steering wheel? Yeah, I think you can see over the steering wheel. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Honda, bro. I mean, I'm just at a really bad angle. It's a Honda, Thank you, bro. Sue. She said, bless me. Yeah. El Fernandez, saludo. Last quarter crunch. Always fun. Yeah, I would agree. I prefer auto tech. Oh, you prefer auto tech over crunch? <laughs> I mean, I technically feel they're the same amps, just with different heat sinks, but I mean, whatever works for you. I know, right? Bless you, now, now, now go to sleep. Oh, dude, I would love to go to sleep. Go to sleep. I'd love to go to sleep. Are you ever sleep in your car? Yes. Actually, some nights when yeah, I get home. Not, not just because you fall asleep, it's just on purpose. Like, I'm just I've only slept in a car on purpose once. Okay. Maybe twice, but once that I can remember. When Sue and I drove to Michigan, when I was back in 1993, uh -huh. and I know the year because that's when I bought the car, I bought my Mitsubishi Eclipse, and we drove to Michigan, I was broke as shit. So we ate at Denny's, and then we pulled in the, we were still in the parking lot, we pulled over in the corner, and we slept in the car for like four or five hours probably like four hours, got out of the car. I thought my spinal cord had been severed from my, like it was, the, I was in the most pain ever. Um, and so on the way back, I found the money to, to get us a hotel because that was just, that was brutal. Yeah, it was painful. <laughs> but beep, beep, ah, toot, toot, says Mr. Berg. What up? Uh, so last night I was installing my eight inch Hertz SPL and the drill did the dance and made a hole in the cone. Can it be patched? Oh. Actually, if it's in the cone, you're okay. Yes, it can be patched. Um, because as long as you didn't hurt the motor structure at all, yes, it, there'll, there'll be a weight, you know, there'll be a little bit of weight issue, but for the most part, it, it's an SPL show. So, no, CA glue, man. Get some CA glue. Um, maybe a little paper on the back, a little paper on the front. It won't be pretty. But yeah, you can glue it back together for sure. No problem. Maybe put a little, get black paper, like black construction paper, so it looks right. Put some on the front, put some on the back. You know, put, uh, so we use, we use zip ties when having to smear CA glue. So we'll take like a big zip tie or one of the little mini zip tie things and we use those to just kind of rub the CA glue everywhere. But um, felt Tessa tape would work. So the, the fleece Tessa tape, um, makes a great little, uh, a great thing to do that too, because it's taped, so it'll stick to, it'll stick to the piece. Um, and then you can add CA glue to it. So like, um, if you get, you get some of this, the, the fuzzy tape like this, and you know, you can use it to, to hold it. To, oh, not that one. Cause I rubbed it. That was silly. Why did I do that? Okay. So you take some of this and you put it on like that. And then, put a little bit of, put some CA glue on it. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this for your cone, but this would be, like, if you had black construction paper, that would be cool for your cone material. But we use this a lot when making Bluetooth mic mounts in the factory mounts. So we move it around like this. Just like it was you know get it all in there nice so it soaks through just moving around using your zip tie see how you're pushing it you have plenty of time this is the thick all right so then when you're done hit it with some activator give it a second as it catches on fire because it's way too much activator um yeah just let it do its thing give it a couple seconds to dry something porous yep yep and this is very porous and then you know what you what you you know if we let this dry a little longer it'll get hard as a rock but as you can see it it's it keeps its shape and it's soaked through so this is really nice when you just need to mock up something really quick and you don't want to bust out like fiberglass mat or something like this. We use fleece test tape. So 
But yeah, CA glue, some paper. This we get off of Amazon. Um, Mobile Solutions has the best. If you want like the best CA glue, get the Mobile Solutions stuff. But yeah, it's, it's even getting harder now. So like, there you go. It's, it's, it's it'll, yeah. A couple layers of this. Yeah, okay. So there you go, tech tip for the day. Or duct tape because duct tape fixes everything. Yes, yes, Sue. <laughs> duct tape fixes everything. Yep. Yeah, I don't have any at my house, but if I needed it, you know. And that's your tech tip of the day. There you go, Bobby. There you go. Just for you, my friend. Just for you. Um, yep. Yo, 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 what's up, Mr. Berg? Put another cone on top. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, yeah, no, that changes the weight. The whole idea is to keep it as light as possible. But, Dad, that's that's a tragedy. That is a tragedy. Duct tape. Duct, not duck. No, of course, yes, duct. Duct. duct, duct. Well, it's duct tape, so it's, it's like... Do we have any duct work in here? It's like duct, like, like this stuff here, not quack, quack. But because we're Americans, we're just going to call it duct tape. You know, because we can do that. Uh, put out your IRTA2 to see that Honda signal out. Oh, pull out. Oh, it sucks. We don't need to. We know it sucks. I mean, we could, but... We have a video. We, yeah, I think we, yeah, we have a video on that. Yes, ducks, not duck. Well, I'll duck and cover, whatever it takes. So, no. Duct tape. I, I, I think, I think, I think duct tape, or duct tape, I think if you have to f sit there and phonetically pronounce it to somebody, then, I, I don't know, I, I feel they're getting way too picky on you. Because, I, like, you, if you call it duct tape, and not duct tape, I'm pretty sure if you don't know what I'm talking about, like, I'm going to take my duct tape and, and like, hostage your ass. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm going to use the stuff that has a duck on it and tape your ass up, you know. And uh, let's see how this does. Tape you to the ceiling. I'll tape you into a duct. Um, but yeah, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Quack, quack tape. Exactly. You have quack, quack tape? <laughs> uh, duct tape has another brand coming out next year. Quarters called Goose Wrap. I, you know, I got to be honest with you. I'm pretty sure there's probably something called Goose Wrap. I mean, I bet you if you Google it, you'll find something called Goose Wrap. I mean, there has to be. There ha I mean, somebody is not, I mean, that's too much. It's got to be. There's got to be something called Goose Wrap. Yeah. 2022, great tape, debate, Lord. Yeah. 100 miles an hour, tape, military term. Okay. Duct tape, wiring harnesses. Um, I've seen it done. We've, we've seen, we've seen it. And it's, it's not pretty. It's just duct tape. Um, who's gonna sweep him up? As soon as Fernando gets his car out of the way, I'll probably sweep him up. Um, but he's just sitting in the car having a good time. That's what I'm here for. Isn't there a brand called duct tape though? There probably is. I mean, we'll go, we'll go to the tape drawer. So here's the tape drawer. So we only use the finest in Gorilla. Um, and then we have, I don't know where, no, this is also Gorilla. And then I don't, Normally, I try to keep a roll of the actual duct tape, the the stuff you put on duct work, the um, silver stuff. Um, but I'm out of that right now. I got to order some more. I like that stuff because it's really great. Like if you're trying to waterproof a radio because that stuff won't peel off with moisture and stuff like that. Um, you can do a lot of neat stuff with the actual aluminum s stuff. But duct dynasty. Ah, thank you, Bobby. That's what I was going to, I was trying to say. I'm going to get some Duck Dynasty duct tape, and then it will be duct tape. Yep, there's Gorilla Tape, and that's what we have. Only the finest. And there you go. There is a brand called Duct Tape. Sue was right. Yes, 3M tape. I, I prefer the 4M tape. It's got one extra M for, mmm... NASCAR Quicks Fix. 
Oh yeah, there's nothing like watching those NASCARs after the race and they got like duct tape holding the bike, the bumpers on and shit like that. Those are the best. There's that car here in the parking lot over by, um, down there, you know, where we park, that has the tape holding the, the whole corner panel on. I always look at that every morning and go, eh, why, really? I mean, it's surprising how it holds. Yeah, it's good stuff. I see plenty, plenty bumpers holding my duct tape. Plenty, yeah. And I mean, now you can get it HVAC tape. Yep, yep, love the HVAC tape. Uh, side note, Sue's dad was in the HVAC industry for like 50 years, so um, know all about tape. I've done I've done the duct work, duct work in my attic, in his attic, and that's why I'm not an AC guy. So kudos to all you AC guys crawling through there doing the duct work. That's uh, that's that's why I'm not in AC business, amongst other reasons. But yeah, screw that shit. I just want the bumper tape. Pokey tape. Boom. Yeah, the 3M metal tape. I like the 3M metal tape. How long can I disconnect the battery and not lose the tune on my Rockford DSR1? Thank you, Chris, for asking a question relative to car audio. Way to go, my friend. Way to go. And that is an interesting question you ask. And if we come over here to the shelf, this little box right here. We've had a mosquito problem, so I'm trying not to burn myself on, on the citronella candle we've been burning all day. This is my DSR-1. This is the one we use in videos. And uh, the last car that this was flashed for was a, might've been an F-150 or Volkswagen Jetta. Um, but it sits in this box forever. And every time I go to use it, I have to reflash it. It is, a, it is just like a thumb drive in that if you put information on a thumb drive and you put it in a drawer, like if we come over here next to the, ah, this amazing piece of artwork right here, if we come over to here and we open this up and we grab any one of these thumb drives, Let's say we grab this old one here. This is for a ILX W650. This was actually pretty new. Let's let's go into, let's see what we got. Oh, here's a old one. Does this have anything on it? Nope, didn't write anything on that. But anyways, so here's, here's a 2023 Pioneer. So this is old. Guess what? It's still on there. It, it never goes away. Your DSR-1 will hold on its memory forever forever it'll never forget it none unless you plug it in and reset it it'll always be there and that's how most dsps are actually i don't really know of any dsp that isn't like that um i could open up this uh pxe 850s that's the one out of my camaro and i could plug it in and i'll have the tune that was in my camaro on it and it won't nothing we won't forget anything so if we open up the Nakamichi right there, that's been sitting on the shelf for like two and a half years now. It'll have the tune that we put on it when we shot that how to use video. So they don't, they don't ever forget. And if I open that up, it'll have the crappy tune on it when we shot the video on how to use a tweak. It'll all still be there. It doesn't go away. So, uh, and it's funny, um, the JVC KWZ1000W radio that I had in my Camaro um that we we put in there what a year and a half how long is that how long have i had the mustang have i had it two years really i don't know. have i i might have uh that is now in the amp dyno display because we needed this for the jvc when we took it out put it into here everything was weird on it we're like what the hell it still had all the settings from my camaro on it and it's been sitting on the shelf for two years so yep go to town man go to town these new things, way better than the old things. That in itself is worth buying a new piece. That red looks nice on that Honda, it does. This would be my mom's car. My mom had a red Honda. She loves red. She's always had a red car. She had a red Honda. Oh, no, you, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sue, I love getting cut on HVAC tape. Okay, that sounds like a kind of a masochistic thing. Um, we need to talk later. I sell to the HVAC guys. There you go. Cool. Dean, does Paul, the dash kit, you with permanent mounted wings for the Dodge Ram Metra 9965-11B? I guarantee you he has that. I guarantee you he has that. 
Um, give him, give him a call. Yes, Dean is burning a candle. I have to, but as you notice, the big door is open, so it's keeping the mosquitoes out. Plus, I can't smell it, so it doesn't really matter. All right, there you go. Installed yours in your 2017 silver round. Besides a four gauge AKH power adapter, what other easy amp riser solutions besides an extra chunk of ABS? Hmm. Um. All right, give me a second here. Uh, piece of PVC, like thin PVC would work. Um, you could spray paint it black and use thin PVC. So get like a, get like the really like eighth inch PVC, spray paint it black, cut it to length would be a nice way to do it. Um, at Home Depot, they sell uh, in the little random tool screw section, they sell little risers at different heights. They're like blue, yellow, and green. They're again some black paint. We'll, we'll make those the right color. I think PVC is probably gonna be cheaper. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we've used. Uh, nuts, like a big nut, like like a nut, you know, like for a bolt, like a nut, you can use a nut as a riser, um, paint them black. Those look good because they're, you know, they're an odd, they're like, you know, stop sign shaped, hexagon. Yeah. Speaking of tape, electrical tape. A fellow installer once used a whole roll of electrical tape on an install because he was mad at the boss. Hilarious until the car came in for a repair. Nightmare. What's up, Paul? Um, okay, so tape tape is not your friend, 100%. And if you'll notice here on my desk, we have the standard black 3M UL approved, you know, whatever tape. This might be Stinger's version. We have the fuzzy fleece Tessa tape. And then we have the, you gotta, you gotta have a pair of scissors tape. Okay, and the reason why all three of them are here on the desk is that well, we also have them in our bags, but and then here's your here's your shrink wrap. So this is an eighth inch shrink wrap. Don't pay attention to the blue. It's just because of COVID, we were having a hard time getting black, so it's you don't ever see it. So we just we could get blue, so we got blue. Um, and then here's for two wires. Consequently, these are tape holders, um, but I got to cut some more of this. This is if we're doing something that has two wires side by side, we use this, and this is if it's just one wire, you know, like a connection. Anyways, the point is is if you're connecting two wires together, if you don't tape over the whole thing, you, you stop it before those connections, and then you start it back up again after those connections. And if like 99% of the time we use this tape, this is the stuff you gotta use scissors. When there is a break in the wire because we're doing some, some connection point, then we'll switch to another style tape. Usually we'll, we'll, we'll switch to this. Sometimes if I can't find that, I'll use this. But either way, the reason for that is that it's easy to see where any work has been done. So if there's two wires that are connected, so like if you need to get to something, that's where your connection point is. That's where you're gonna wanna go to check your wire. You know, if you have, if I take a piece of wire here like this, okay, and I run it from point A to point B, the likelihood of this, this wire being bad between you know this point here and this point here okay it is thin okay but i don't need to see this wire to know if something's bad okay so hold on you know if if you suspect the wire is is faulty or it's not doing whatever it needs to do grab my meter then you know you can check the wire without pulling any of the electrical tape off that you're using so grab your digital multimeter do the whole little continuity test here. And then grab your, your strippers. Oh yeah, stripper. Grab our other stripper. All right, so now we got both ends stripped. So if I put tape, if I sit here and I tape this whole wire up, all right, or I put it in eighth inch flexi loom or whatever, doesn't matter. All I need to see are these two ends here where, where I made my two connections at. So now I can, if I suspect this is bad, I pull that little piece of tape off. I cut the shrink wrap. I go like this and I go, hey, I got continuity. Or if I suspect it's bad, because let's say when I put it in, I uh, might have caught it on something. And I go like this, oh crap, that's bad. 
Now, I'm not gonna go through and pull all the tape off. I'm just gonna run a new wire because I know from these two points, this one is bad somewhere. So I'll just, whatever, and grab some more tape, grab a new wire and run it into the car. And then I don't have to worry about any of that, like, oh, what happened? It's, it's just kind of thinking through the service. Like if it does come back for a service, how am I gonna check it? Always, because things don't last forever. Uh, just have to remember to save it though. Right team? Never save it. Never save it. Uh, is Nando straight power on the Moscone right now or DSP in it? Right now we straight power. We just haven't had time to put the DSP in. What did you guys just finish? That was a Honda Civic that we put the R2 Rockford 1200.1 on a factory SCAR audio box off of the factory radio. It was kind of weird. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know. Show them the 8 gauge risers. I think everyone has seen them. I mean, we talk about them enough, but you know, if you're not doing like a bunch of, you know, fuse holders, then you're not going to have. You know, you're not going to have a plethora of of these things. So, I mean, obviously we do a lot of fuse holders, and so we have tons of this stuff, but mo most people aren't going to have that just laying around. So, I mean, reality is, is all you need is something with a hole in it. Um, I mean, honestly, these, these are uh, feral, or not ferals, these are the... Um, rivets nut certs these are great like you can use these as a riser i've used these because you know it's an m6 hole so if you put an m5 screw through it these make for great risers plus they're already gold so they look kind of pretty um, if you get the silver ones which are aluminum you can use that um, another thing you can get for amplifier risers which i just got the other day for, all right, hold on. Let me see if I can remember where I put them. All right. Oh, yeah, these. Um, I just used these on... I made uh, Sebastian a fidget spinner on the laser because he was up here and he's like, ah, oh, can you make something? I go, of course I can make something. Um, but these, these right here, got these off of Amazon. And so these are shafts. Then they have a threaded end in them here. So these are these are pretty cool. Uh, and then they have the little screws here. Um, these are belt repairs. I have no idea. I didn't buy them for that. I just bought them because I thought they'd be pretty cool and you know screwing stuff together. Acrylic. Acrylic would make a really nice one too. Um, but there again, you said no. The person said no ABS or something like that. But yeah, I mean, if you have, like we have this bin of useless acrylic pieces, we could, you know, cut out as many little risers of which we've done, but on Amazon, nylon risers are black. Yes, yes they are. Yeah, so, um, do we still have those? Uh, hang on. I used to have those. Oh, these are oh, these are really nice too. Um, these are aluminum standoffs. Look at these. So these, these are just aluminum standoffs. You can get these are for hanging pictures off walls. You can get these on um, Amazon too, and they come in different heights. Like there's this height here, um, and then there's this height here. So there's, there's those. Uh, here's a bag, of little plastic ones. So there's a little quarter inch plastic ones. These used to come with the uh, Alpine speakers for their 5x7s. So we got like, I've just kept a couple bags of these just because. These are the plastic totes that are over here in the corner that no one ever sees us use because honestly, we don't really. This is like the last resort screw bin that I've had these for probably my whole career. And they just have random. Ran, oh, base knob. Um, they just have random parts in them. So like, look, look at this, like we'll never use these, but I just, I can't get rid of it. Cause so like we have some of these old school pieces and there's like just random D 
distribution block stuff and yeah it's just it's just all a bunch of remember v12s from look at this so this is what came with your v12 amplifier uh to go from eight gauge to four gauge because they couldn't put a, a four gauge on the side of the amplifier and so then you got all these little rubber pieces like uh, some of this stuff is 20 years old like, like i would never like we just have shrink wrap for that but these are cool like these were fun back in the day stinger used to make these and you could buy them this was for the twisted wire they sold that was that was really cool and then this is like a black version of that i gotta use these in something i gotta find something special to put those on um but that's like what all of this stuff is this is all just like random old parts that like i just i built that i i built this is from ave that's how old this is i built this in ave oh wow hey there's a broken soldering gun um I built this back at AVE and I brought it with me when I left and it just kind of grew into the wall. So uh, Dean favorite gangster movie, Casino, Godfather or Goodfellows? Uh, Godfather one and two. Godfather one and two for sure. I have those. I think I have those on Blu-ray. Afternoon, guys. Afternoon. How are you? Looks like I need to make a wire bin run. Eh, it's... Yeah, it's full. Uh, saving it for your... <laughs> no, no. Honestly, I forget they're there most of the time. I mean, that's literally like, oh, crap. Hey, guys. Greeting from Corpus Christi, Texas. What's happening? Uh, I picked up a Harmony Audio prefab ported box, and it actually sounds great. Very impressive. Why wouldn't it? But that's cool. Uh, if I'm doing kicker key for front stage F-150, what do I need to get to add a monobloc amp for the sub? Um, so a lot of the times what we do is we do a, um, we'll do the key and then the other, the key 501 for the sub. So if you wanna do that, that's really cool. Um, if you're, because a key isn't, you know, it's, it's kind of small. Look at that thing, isn't sexy? Um, a key is, you know, it's 70 watts or 80 watts by 4 or 90 watts by 4. I don't remember what it is. Um, 70? Yeah. Uh, so the key 501 is really nice. Either way, no matter whatever you need to do, most of the amplifiers you're going to buy are going to have high level to low level built into them. So you're fine there. And the, the speaker wires that you're tapping to feed the key 200.4 are the same wires you need to feed your monoblock because in the Ford you want to come off the front channels, not the back channels. So uh, you can get the iData FO2, DFO2 harness. Um, you can also get, if you want to get the iData DFO2 harness and the AR for it, you can reflash your radio to. Um, well, no, you're doing you're doing a front stage upgrade only. Never mind, forget that. You can still get the DFO2 harness. That'll be the harness you need, so you don't have to cut yours. So get the DFO. That's the iData DFO2 harness. Fernando's sweeping, by the way. He's beating me to it because I'm doing I this. Um, and then you you're gonna plug the rears back in, and you're only gonna use the the fronts, which are gonna be the white and grays. Uh, and those are gonna feed your mono amp and your four channel amp. So. The key, and here's the cool thing about the key, is that the key uses DC offset and also feeds a remote turn on out of the amplifier. So if the other amplifier you have has the, okay, sorry about that. If you off like signal sense or whatnot, you can use the key to feed the other amplifier. So yeah, okay. <sighs> Do FRS cars have similar harnesses on their dash speakers to Tacomas where the speakers connect loops to the door speakers? Yes. But you'll know right away when you pull it out because um, it'll have four wires in the speaker harness and not two. PCB mount risers are nice. It matter because every time we go to set it, Instagram is hating me all of a sudden. Um, yeah. 
we can stand all the way out back. Pause, dude. Poor connection. Pause, dude. Poor connection. See, look at him. Look at him doing his job there. He's just killing it. What a guy. All right, guys, listen, I'd like to stay and chat for the rest of the night, but I'm going to grab a broom and help Fernando finish this up so we can get out of here. So you guys have a great rest of your night. We'll see you tomorrow.